Hey, welcome to the Hell Has an Exit podcast. I'm your host, Brian Alzate. This show is not affiliated with any specific 12-step program. If you or a loved one is struggling with an addiction, please find a local 12-step meeting. If you believe you may need detox or drug treatment of any kind, please call 833-999-1877 to speak to a specialist. The show is sponsored by United Recovery Project, a state-of-the-art drug and alcohol rehab facility. You can visit our website at unitedrecoveryproject.com. Hey, welcome to Hell Has an Exit. I'm your host, Brian Alzate. On this show, we interview a lot of recovering addicts who have amazing stories of overcoming all sorts of scenarios and situations, upbringings, all different walks of life. And we're probably most active on Instagram. If you could follow us on Instagram at Hell Has an Exit. We are also on video on YouTube. If you have Apple Podcasts, please like and subscribe. If you're on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Today, I have two guests, Los and Tommy. I've probably known you guys since you've been clean over the years. You know, I've gotten closer to Tommy. I know you guys have like really great stories. And um, I think it's important for like people when they first get clean to like see camaraderie. You know, like a lot of times when you think about getting clean, you don't think about doing it with someone that you're cool with. You just think like you're going to do it on your own or whatever. A lot of times getting clean, you have to like get rid of all like your old ass friends and like you're, you feel alone or whatever. So like I've seen you guys get clean together and stay clean. You guys have been clean over three years. You know, so welcome to Hell as an Exit. Yeah, Glad man. to be here, Brian. It's, it's, Glad it's an to be honor. Here. I know you guys went viral on Facebook before, so I know yeah. it's going to be interesting. We're used to this. <laughs> we, we, we actually, we set it up like a, in a week in advance. I don't know if I told you that earlier. Uh -uh. We're like going on Facebook and everything and like. That was mad fun because it was during quarantine. <laughs> and I was just laughing yeah. so hard. Well, nobody had nothing to do but go on. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like right. Facebook. And Everybody stuff. was completely bored sitting mm -hmm. at the crib just waiting for us to fucking go live. Go live. So bored. Nobody can so leave fun. their house. So we like as yeah. like at the beginning of the week, we like pretty much were like um like letting people know that Oh you Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. We was out like, there. Like promoting so it. Yeah, 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 we promoted yeah, it. We promoted, promoted it. Like the whole week. <laughs> Yeah. And then <laughs> we all had special guests and all that. <laughs> yeah, we had special guests there. We said we're gonna have a special guest coming Friday. Everyone tune in. It's gonna be crazy. <laughs> and pretty much just aired everything out there. Yeah. And that was well, a wild time. I know a little bit about your story, Tommy. Where'd you uh grow up? I grew up in Lowell, Massachusetts. Mm hmm What was that like? I mean <laughs> it's it's kind of a bad city, I guess. Mm -hmm. A lot of gangs. Drug dealing, drug using, you know, my both my parents are addicts, mm -hmm. you know, I was raised around it. Mm -hmm. Growing up in a house with my grandparents, you know, four, I have, you know, there was four of us, me, my little sister, my two little brothers, and then, you know, there was always all my cousins over there mm -hmm. in a little two-bedroom apartment. And um, there was like four of us in, in um, one room, and then my sister had her own room. She was her own girl, mm -hmm. the only girl. It was, I thought that was like kind of normal because it wasn't just me. Mm -hmm. Like I had friends that grew up like that too. Or their parents used or whatever. Well, not like used, but like. Poverty parents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like just like, there was so many people to like a house. You know? Gotcha. And it was just like, kind of like, I thought like everyone was like that. Yeah. You didn't think it was weird at all. No. And it just like, as, as at a young age, just like going through and, and, and seeing so much shit that like it was just normal mm -hmm. you know for me you know i met my the first time i ever met my dad was in you know state prison mm -hmm. you know that's the first time like a social worker bring me there and to like meet my dad well that i can remember mm -hmm. i don't know where if were I you was, living at the time at that time i believe my grandmother had adopted me by then mm -hmm. but there was at some point in time you know it's hard to remember but like i was in like um you know a foster home mm -hmm. did you I, go into foster homes later on I'm trying to remember. Just... I was young. I, I don't remember the exact age, but I I, I was li living with my mom. Mm -hmm. You know, she was you know in active addiction, mm -hmm. and um, I'm guessing that you know I, I've they the state took me from her mm -hmm. because of her addiction, and I remember like vaguely like <clears throat> certain like scenarios of being in this you know this home with these you know people, mm -hmm. and just certain situations in that house. It was just like weird. Like I would just be in my this room by myself. Mm -hmm. And I remember like just like little memories. Like, you know, when I was outside, I would like climb this tree mm -hmm. 
and that's it. Like literally, like being in that room and, and that tree is the, like really only thing I remember. Gotcha. Did you then, see a lot of using? Like, do you see people using when you're younger? Of course. From my mom's side, my mo- out of my mom's siblings, she's the only one mm-hmm. who used. But from my grandmother, like my grandmother used too. All of her sisters and brothers pretty much used. Mm-hmm. There's probably like one or two who didn't. And I think there's like six or seven of them. But they're all like real hardcore, like using not just like, you know. Having a couple of drinks. Having a couple of drinks. Like, so what would you like, see? Like you crack. see like hardcore. Oh, you see like people smoking crack? Yeah, like I've seen that at a young age. Um, you know, my grandmother acting weird. And what would you think as a kid? Would you like think it was just like how adults had fun, or did you know it was like fucked up at the time? I thought I thought it was weird, and I thought it was different. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know any better, so I just I knew it was like not like normal, but I didn't know that it was bad. Yeah, you know. Gotcha. I mean, I've seen it a lot. You know, I've seen tons of fights within my family. Outside the family, mm-hmm. you know, my my mom would come over. I remember this. Me and, you know, like I said, my siblings were raised by my grandmother. My mom would, you know, come in and 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 stop in and and every like few months or like every six months or something. And then you know she just went ghost. You know what I mean? She would always say, "Oh, I'm gonna come on this day." Most of the time she didn't show up. Mm-hmm. But I remember, I didn't, we stopped seeing her for a, like a long time. I think it was like five years or something, or like period of years Mm -hmm. and i'm always used to seeing her asserting a certain way you know like just you know kind of strung out skinny whatever and we didn't see her for a couple years and then i remember one day someone knocking on my door i opened the door and it was just some woman there and i was just like you know nana someone's at the door oh and it was my mom she was locked up and she had gained weight and she just like you know what i mean look yeah it looked totally different and Mm -hmm. i didn't even recognize her who she was wow and she was like oh my god come here and i was like who the fuck is this lady (laughs) (laughs) it was like i was kind of shocked but i was you know then afterwards it was just like nothing ever happened Mm -hmm. you know right back to how it was what about you los where are you from originally from new york and it's so crazy like i'm sitting here thinking and like we have two totally different, different stories sto- totally different stories uh-huh. man and like we're sitting here at the same spot and that's mm-hmm. just so crazy how like it's how don't ma- it don't matter it yeah. does not matter i always tell people like use it the same way like you'll be smoking crack with somebody and like bro two totally different walks of yeah. life you know what i mean <laughs> together, like, like stockbroker yeah. prostitute yeah. whatever yeah. muslim all, christian all chilling 17 70 <laughs> like we're all, we're all trying to get a hit you know yes, so it's man. like when you get clean i mean when you sit in those seats of the rooms like you know you're really sitting with people that like it's like we all went through some crazy ass shit to get here in a different way you know yep absolutely so. i grew up in in new york and like my family what part uh brooklyn mm-hmm. I, uh, I grew up in brooklyn was born in brooklyn i moved to you the bronx like for a brooklyn. while i like a brooklyn kid <laughs> yeah it's the way that my hat slanted. yeah right? <laughs> yeah but like my parents like growing up like they did everything that they had to do to make my life better mm-hmm. you know what i mean neither one of my parents are drug addicts or alcoholics both worked for a living they both retired from working 30 years plus mm-hmm. at the same job like they both went to school like my dad was a was in the military for a very long time like i grew up on like morals and fucking doing the right thing and Mm -hmm. sent to good schools and like like all that like i I, like totally different from him Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like a different breed yeah yeah. lol just so you guys know When you like, if you see like a fucking syringe on the ground, like I see shit like that, and like I think of the city of Lowell. That's yeah. <laughs> what's that, that bad? That was That's Lowell yeah. is, just so you guys know. Mm-hmm. Still bad like that? Actually, it's 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 a lot different. Like the gangs and stuff are, are a lot down. The um the violence with like young kids and guns, it's a lot different now. It's mm-hmm. like there's a lot more shootings and stuff, mm-hmm. but there's not more of like I guess it's like. Everyone's just going crazy, like the younger generation just going yeah. crazy. But there's still like syringes all over the place and stuff like that. No, they're starting to clean it up a lot. All right, cool. <laughs> they're like there was like a tent city place where all like the uh-huh. homeless people like would stay. Like, I mean, I stayed there a couple mm-hmm. times. The city's like trying to like just wash everything mm-hmm. out and try to make it good. So when you grew up, so like think about like you grew up seeing all these drugs and shit. You obviously probably thought it wasn't like attractive as a kid. How did you start going from you know being that innocent kid that wasn't really wanting to do drugs to like someone who's like fucking with drugs it started with um 
from like me being kind of like a, a street kid to like like always being in the street, getting into trouble, like you know what I mean, throwing you know rocks through the college UMass low, like mm-hmm. throwing through the windows, running through the buildings at like night breaking in to being like a like a not really caring how I dressed or nothing like that, just being like a real street kid, like in the streets with my mm-hmm. boys. I I met my brother, my older brother on my dad's side, and um, I started to go out with him and hang out with him. You know, him and his friends would like dress nice and like go out to parties and stuff, start drinking and and you know like be the cool kids you know mm-hmm. what i mean and I, I like you know what i mean i want us to be like that so bad you know what yeah. i mean so then i started dressing nice i started drinking and my brother never even smoked a cigarette in his life never touched a pill never mm-hmm. done nothing when it comes to drinking he can he fucking drinks and mm-hmm. so that's what we did at early age like he would dismiss me from school like i remember one time this is crazy right i'm in i'm in class in school right and they're like, oh, you need to go to the the um the office. I go to the principal and he's like, you know, there's been an accident. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, there's been a bad car accident with your grandmother. Your brother's coming to pick you up. And I'm like, my brothers, my brothers can't drive. I wasn't even thinking of my <laughs> older brother. I'm like, my brothers don't even drive. They're like, oh, your brother, Dickie? And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, it's my brother. Mm-hmm. And then I'm sitting there. And then my my brother's best friend at the time, his little brother was in school with me too. He comes in. And then saying, I'm like, what do you, what happened? He's like, my mom got into a car accident. I'm like, bro, my grandmother got into a car accident. What the fuck's going on? It's like a 15 car And then I see, I see my brother pull up in the car through the window with his older brother. Um, and I look at him and I just start dying laughing. I'm like, uh-huh. let's go. We just left the thing and immediately started drinking in this fucking <laughs> wow. party. And I was like, noon. Wow. So that, you know, that's how it kind of started. Mm-hmm. And your older brother, how old was he? He is... How much older is he? He's a, a year older than me. Okay. Oh, wow. So he wasn't that much older. Yeah. A year or two. But... All right. W- what about you, Lowe's? What, siblings? How'd you start using? Like, you know, you come so, from like a super good family. Yeah. So, like, I grew up D.A.R.E. program type shit. <laughs> <laughs> yo. Like, yo. Yo, it was bad. It, like, people that smoke weed were fucking really bad people. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Like, you grew up like that. Yo, my mother would whoop my fucking ass uh-huh. if she ever, ever. Like, I was I was scared of that because that's how I grew up. You uh-huh. know what I mean? So, like, even kids that that were doing that shit, I was uh-huh. like, yeah, I would, like, don't get me wrong, I was cool as fuck, mm-hmm. but I just didn't do that, you know what yeah. I'm saying? He wasn't like a nerd. Right, I was, I was a nerd, but the coolest fucking nerd you ever <laughs> seen in your life type like, nerd. Like sports and all that? <laughs> sports, sports, I got, I did good okay. in fucking school, you know what I'm saying? Like, I graduated high school, mm-hmm. but like, Pri- hard, private us- hard using or? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, well, when do you transition into like, not doing nothing to like slowly start using so like i got into the program i was mom dated into the 12-step program in 2001. did you say mom dated mom dated <laughs> i was forced in the program by my mom i didn't That's know no- i, I didn't know i didn't know nothing that. about anything uh-huh. right so like i was doing it i got i got, I got arrested for possession of cocaine but i wasn't doing cocaine like that you know what i'm saying i was it was like a party how old drunk. were you this was 2001, so tw- like 19, 20. Okay, so when you're 19, 20, your, your mom sees that you got a possession charge of power. Correct. And then she, she's she like, you oh, go you to- got this big, like, again, she's like, what? You're fucking using cocaine? You must have a huge <laughs> issue. Uh-huh. So, like, she's like, you're going to fucking treatment. And I was wow. like, anything to get me? I said, I'll go. To- I didn't even know what treatment. I didn't even know what rehab yeah, was. To just get out. Just to get out. How old, how old were you? This 19, was, 20. Yeah, yeah 19, 20. like 20 years old. I was oh, like 20. Were- yeah, that was back in 2002. Mm-hmm. So the one. Two, yeah, 2001, 2002. Mm-hmm. So that's how I got introduced. But I, I didn't, the entire time, I didn't think that I had a problem. I was just going through the motions yeah. so that, you know what I'm saying, mommy and daddy could. You think you learned me. anything in that first rehab or you got worse? Just oh, the, it was way worse. It was way, like, <laughs> you learned so shit. I went, so this is what happened. Like, I went, I that happened, right? I was able to stay clean for uh, two years. Okay. Um, I was in halfway, like I went to meetings. Wow. Yeah, I was in I was in it, but I was faking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was faking it. I was just and that's what I did my whole life. That's did why you I think you're an addict in the back of your mind? Not not even a fucking one percent of me. <laughs> not even one percent. And wow. the crazy thing is, is that so that happened and then I started smoking weed and mm-hmm. like just like 
drinking like a normal person, normal life, yeah. like once in a while, maybe I'll have some fucking, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'll drink some lick and go to the strip club, but it was never like out of control. I smoked weed like a like a normal pothead, you know what yeah. I mean? And I did that for fucking 12 years. Wow. After the first rehab. Okay. So like, and I didn't even touch cocaine again for that mm. entire time. Wow. So I, even in my head, I'm like, I'm not like these motherfuckers. Yeah. Like, look, that's I'm interesting. Because I always try to explain to people, like, <clears throat> dude, like, if you're an addict, it's not like the same way for everybody. Like, a lot of people think like, oh, I still have a job, or like, you know, I'm not really using that hard now. I just like used to or whatever, you know. Right. Being in recovery is really about whether or not you want to be in recovery. As opposed to, like, if you're an addict or not, you know? Correct. And you know what kind of fuck, fucked me up was that, like, when you get to treatment, the way that I went into treatment, mm -hmm. like, it wasn't, like, this whole big thing and, like, oh, you got years of, like, you fucking up and doing... So, like, yeah. when I went in there, I immediately... Separated. Yourself. Separated. And I heard people smoking crack and I'm like, oh, <laughs> What the fuck? The fuck? <laughs> I'm definitely not an addict because mm -hmm. I was one, you know what I'm saying? Like I was, I, I wasn't thinking straight and mm -hmm. I was just uh, from the rip. I just separated myself. Mm -hmm. And then what happened later on? So when I was in the program, uh -huh. I got with my baby moms, had a baby. She was, she was a real addict at the time, knew it like in and out of jail. In heroin, a real program. Yeah. Real program chick, right? After I got out, never touched heroin, never touched really any hard drugs. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, I sniffed cocaine a couple times. It wasn't crazy. So I lived on the other side. Like, I grew up dealing with this. She was stealing from me, manipulating me, lying to me. Fucking, I had to take my child. She was in and out of the program. Mm -hmm. I was like, you're a fucking junkie. Like, mm -hmm. calling her all these fucking names, asking her, why can't you just stop? And, like, I played that side of the coin for for years mm -hmm. and and i always say this like i don't know what it was the only phrase or the only thought that i can come up with <laughs> on why i did this you can't beat them join them and mm -hmm. though it's a fucked up situation to join but that's how like i fought with her for so long i was like yo let me try this shit let me see what's really good let me see why she can't like get out of it yeah. get out of it it must be that fucking good that you won't do it for it like i was yeah. just not so i started using my baby mom's hit hit me up for the first time you went from mm. not really doing a lot of drugs to just kind of socially <laughs> drinking for years to like, to like yo stick a needle in me <laughs> the Shoot first time heroin. i used a hard drug was a needle I, it was a fucking needle i've wow. never sniffed a pill i've never sniffed heroin that's I went crazy straight. you just had her shoot you up I just, I just, and I was, it was the worst fucking night in my life. That's like life. a little kid being like, yo, hey, give me the basketball. He goes to the NBA. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mean that's kind of crazy because not even. No college, no yeah, high school. Yeah. And like, unlike you, like, I didn't grow up around that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. My first introduction to like hard drugs was the program. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't have Yeah, and have you probably that, were super standoffish about correct. it. Correct. Anyway. I was yeah. super standoffish. And, and yeah, it had, like, I remember one night, hotel, I was like, fuck it. Like, I called her up. I was like, yo, I want to do it. She was like, no, 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 no. She didn't fight too hard after, yeah. like. It's that I, was, I was like, no. I have bread. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's really just the wrong I got bread. Right, <laughs> right. I said, I got bread. I knew that yeah. was the key. As soon as I said I had bread, no addict can fucking turn yeah. that down. Oh, she was like, come on over. Yeah, I'm at the hotel. Here's the address. Wait, did you do any, like you didn't do no percocets no 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 like i had tried i had tried fucking molly but it was all party stuff but not like, opiates on a, not like on a friday night first never opiates dog. so you weren't doing never. pills before you didn't have no That's tolerance crazy. And no you just shot you up with heroin did you throw it, up yeah i was throwing up all night yeah. and it wasn't heroin it was i shot up dilaudid for the first oh, time okay first thing was, was that's, dilaudid. that's safe Nice. Yeah, it was safe. <laughs> I knew exactly what I was doing. I'm a there little bougie. Go. Literally the worst night of my fucking life. I was curled up like a uh -huh. fucking baby, throwing up on the side of the fucking bed. I like, that. it was the worst time yeah. ever. I um, hated opiates for like four times. And like the fifth time, it just hooked me. Yeah. 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 I think everyone, like, that very first time when they're puking and everything... Like, for me, I thought I was allergic. I was like, I can't take that shit. I'm allergic. I'll die. <laughs> like, and everyone around me, like, was doing it. And I'm just like, let me try it again. And then I, I like. Yeah, the, the addiction is that you do it again. <laughs> right, exactly. exactly. Yeah. That's, the, that's the addiction. That's the disease. That, yo, the I disease. said I did, I did too much. You wilding out. Like, you got you to gotta cut that in half or yeah. cut that in a quarter. And that's how I'm going to feel uh -huh. nice. That shit's crazy. <laughs> so what about you, Tommy? You started drinking with your brother. And then, like, what happens in your story? Yeah, man. I mean, it was 
this was like I was still like you know like 13 12 13 14 years old mm -hmm. it, just, it was just drinking right it was just drinking for like a long time but mm -hmm. when I look but now that I'm in recovery right and I understand how like you know addiction works mm -hmm. I look back at it and at fucking like 13 years old 14 even 14 Full blown. You, know, yeah. you know what I mean like we're fucking literally like would hit like let's just say like US1 or something mm -hmm. you know like just a Go, main highway, yeah. Main, yeah, just main fucking road, hitting yeah. every like like store with like that sells like liquor. I would go into, I would go in there with like a like a cup full of like pennies, nickels, whatever, mm -hmm. right? And I would fucking go to the cash register and fucking like you know ask for something like whatever, like behind the counter, like a Dutch or whatever, and and like fucking pretend I would pretend I'm drunk the whole time and knock everything over <laughs> behind the counter. <laughs> So as the guys picking up Your like fucking pennies, my brother and his friends were going to pick uh fucking That's they would crazy. take mini kegs. Mini kegs. Yeah. Or like fucking <laughs> one time we even got a like a, a normal size keg, bro. <laughs> or like wine, the wine bottles, cause mm -hmm. like, you know, at certain times there's only the stores that only have like wine in them. And fucking I'm I'm looking looking back now and I'm like, bro, like fucking kids don't do that. Like yeah. fucking and how much of a rush was that? Like that getting was, away with yeah, it, it was and having crazy. A, a fucking yeah, <laughs> Heineken <of> cake. <laughs> so like, like, you with a shit. Like, yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> and it was like, and it's crazy because it's like no hard drugs. You know, we're just and and the whole time we were doing it for like to hang out with girls. You know, partying with bitches, mm -hmm. fucking having fun. Mm -hmm. And my brother's friends, like they didn't like like I said, like it was just like like frat kid, like oh, just only only drinking, mm -hmm. right? And but it was like a lot of drinking, like pu you're blacking out every time like mm -hmm. that we drink <laughs> monday through friday we would drink you know leaving school so like at an early age to go drink and doing all that shit and for a long time that's how it went and then you know i, I started hanging out with you know my own crowd of people you know the crowd i was hanging out with was like you know selling drugs using it here and there mm -hmm. i still i didn't touch any hardcore drugs you know i thought that that shit like a lot Close, my close friends were using it, and I'm just like, yo, you guys need to chill out with that. I seen how bad they were getting. Chill out, chill out. And it wasn't until, you know, I started to, I got into this relationship with this chick, and one night, I was just like, you know, because we would drink every night, and I'm mm -hmm. and do coke. We do coke here and there. And that one night, I was just like, you know, we want to try, like, a Percocet and shit, and just, like, just chill out at the crib. <laughs> yeah, when I first, like, That's what happened. thought of doing painkillers, I'm like, yeah, this is going to relax me. Right. And then you do, like, your first painkiller, you're, like, up all over, like, up all night, <laughs> cleaning everything. I was like, yo, this is almost like Coke, but you don't get paranoid. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, like, bro. I was really, I remember the first time I did a opiate was because I wanted to go to sleep because I was all skeeted. I was like, oh, I'm all fucked up on this powder. Mm -hmm. Like, let me take something to go to sleep. Like, I thought yep. painkiller, you know, you think, like, nod it out. Right. And, bro, I took one. I was fucking more fucking <laughs> jacked out of my mind than fucking the, all the coke I was doing. It's crazy, bro. Like, when I think back, I'm like, I'm a fucking idiot. I, like, how I could have avoided certain shit, but I just, like, dove right into it. And then, So when you started doing perks, like, how'd you, you didn't like it and then you just kept doing it with your girl? Well, like, it, it all happened because fucking, well, she's the one who kind of forced, like, pushed it because... I was, like I said, like I was always out partying and, and I was doing coke mm -hmm. and we would literally go out to parties and I would like leave with another girl and like she would like be blowing up my phone and like I'd be <laughs> at a whole nother party with my friends <laughs> and like, like there was times where she like showed up and I would like, don't let her in and like, you know what I mean? They wouldn't let her in to like, you can't come in Yeah. and fucking, and one night, like I think we were fighting this time, like, oh, let's like try this and like, we can go, go to your house and just watch a movie. Mm -hmm. And after that first night. Every night she was just like, you want to, instead of going out, you want to just like get like a, a pill and like go watch a movie. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, fuck it. And after like, you know, a week of doing it, I started to get sick and I didn't know. Was it like, cause I know in, in Florida, it's like once I started to do pills, it's like, I like looked and everybody was on pills. Was it like that over there? Yeah, absolutely. Like as soon as I like stepped into pills, it just like everyone I knew was on pills and it just like all happened all at once. Everyone, everyone was kind of already like on pills I, I like i guess i was a little late because mm -hmm. i was like just p alcohol and coke yeah once i got like once i was in it everyone was already on it so i was yeah. just, i just kind of like did you ever think like about like your parents and like man maybe i shouldn't do drugs because it's like in my jeans or some shit or you like that wasn't even a thought <clears throat> it was at the beginning like when i was with my brother mm -hmm. like drinking and stuff i'm like i'm only gonna do this stuff and then i remember doing my first line and I fucking loved it. Like, yeah. I, I did, like, you know, eventually I, I got 
fucking to homeless and fucking, you know what I mean, shooting heroin. But at the beginning, cocaine, like when I did my first line, I fucking, that feeling was just so mm-hmm. fucking crazy. And that was my thing for like a long time. Yeah. I fucking loved it. Yeah, me too. I remember like my friends doing it and like being like, okay, like now let's go out. And right. I was just like, nah, like, I was just so, <laughs> I remember like being like, I'm staying here. Like, yeah, I don't want right. to go nowhere. And I remember them being like, yo, like, I, mean, I remember them leaving me in the car with no AC, just like doing coke because I couldn't leave. Like one of the telltale signs of someone being an addict is like them using by themselves. I remember buying coke by myself because oh, other yeah. people were too social. They were like, oh, let's go get coke. Then let's go to the mall. I'd be like, no, like we're just going to do coke. The third time yeah. I've ever done coke when I got introduced to it and like the very, like the third time, it was like two days later, I did it like every day. And the third time I didn't have no money. I literally sold the rims off my Acura Integra. (laughs) My very first car, I like, I fucking, well, they were like good rims and I traded them and then fucking sold the other ones. My car had no no wheels on it. It was just sitting on fucking um, cinder blocks. My third time using, cause there was that, like I wanted that so bad that fucking, I didn't have no money. I fucking sold my my rims. You know, it's funny too, like what you said, like, like your friends wanted to do that. I knew there was an issue because when I when I was doing cocaine, I was the only one that stayed up. Mm-hmm. Like I was still like people were going to sleep, and I was like so frustrated and like walking the streets, mm-hmm. like just doing stupid shit by myself. <laughs> and it was all the time. I was like, damn, how the fuck do you guys fall asleep? Like yeah. I just want to be like that, and I knew that I was different. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I was like, something's going on. Yeah, I remember going to a party having like you know a quarter on me i'd sell like six grams at the party four grams at the party like random people and then i'd be done with mine and i had like an eight ball to my face and then i'd be <laughs> begging them for a hit of their <laughs> shit and they're like they're like bro didn't you come here with a whole bunch of shit you sold <laughs> it to us i'm like bro i'm coming down don't you just get a bump and they just be like bro this kid is fucking out and here you got no shame at that yeah, no. Like, come on, man. yeah just give me a bump bro i'm gonna get more later you know I fucking but, hated that stage. But the thing is, like, Coke seems, like, real social and normal. Like, some people, like, oh, whatever. I got really bad with Coke instantly. Like, it, like I've smoked right. crack, obviously. But, like, I was just as fucked up on Coke as I was on crack. Just the crack was just, like, another level to it. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. And and that's... And to backtrack a little bit, when I when I did, when, like, the first... When I first got into, um you know, Coke, mm-hmm. I was fucking probably, like, 16. I met my, my kid's mother. Mm-hmm. And we literally, like, she got pregnant and, you know, she had my son. Wow. And that was, like, the start of fucking, like, when I started, like, ruining everything. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, like, she eventually, like, you know, kicked me out. I continued with partying and, ju- and and doing coke. And I slowly seen it become, you know, partying and drugs, partying and coke, partying and coke to just less alcohol and more and more and more coke. Mm-hmm. And that's all it was. I was hitting people up just to get coke, just to mm-hmm. go and get coke. And that's what it was, you know, just cocaine. And yeah. then, you know, fast forward, that's when I met that girl. And then Perks. Perks. That yeah. got bad. That turned to heroin mm-hmm. fucking real quick. And I wasn't doing shit. Like at the beginning, I was selling it and just to like support our habit. And then it got to the point where I was we were both like just, just doing, doing it. Just doing yeah. it. You know what I mean? It wasn't like no <laughs> crazy drug dealer or anything like that. It was just to do it. And it got to the point where she was going to work at the, she was a bartender mm-hmm. and I would just drive her car around all day waiting for her to get out at night. It's just to so give you the money. Yeah. And then we would both cop mm-hmm. and then go home. And that's what, it went like that for like, for years. And I, I didn't have no, like at that point, unless we had like a little come up, we didn't have no, I didn't have no fucking side hustle, no anything at that time. Mm-hmm. I was just like leeching off her and her <laughs> fucking tips. Praying as you that, should, you know, as you yeah, should. As you pray, should. <laughs> praying for her to fucking, you know, to make city a, boys winning. <laughs> yeah, a good, a good amount Yo, of money. Me, me and my, me and my baby moms used to do that shit all the time. Like one day it was my day, the next day it was her day. Mm-hmm. Like either, yeah, either I was hustling or she, or was, she hustling. was hustling. Wait, wait. So hang on. So you shoot up for the first time. You, you know, the next yeah, time you do a little bit less. <laughs> How old are you at this point? So this is, I'm 38 now. This is like right at 30. I was a right late. Right at 30. Yeah, I was a late bloomer. Okay. Super late. 30 years old shooting Delauded's for the first time ever. So then what happens in your store after that? So Delauded's became super expensive. Mm-hmm. Couldn't keep up with the habit. That turned into that turned into tar first. Were you like, what am and I doing? And this is down here. <laughs> yeah, you, this is down here. Yeah. Are you like thinking like, bro, I come from a good family, like, Yo, did, like good family, even. and wait, private fucking private school, Catholic school, y'all, Co- college, well, private yeah, college, like all this shit. Yeah, well. don't discriminate. Don't discriminate. <laughs> don't discriminate. Wow. 
Yes, so just everybody. Fucking yeah, shoot me I was, up. yeah, doing tar after that, then the tar oh t- turned into, and I caught this habit in in Florida. Uh-huh. So when I caught this habit, it was the pill mills was just popping. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Yeah, because you know, for me, like like when I got clean, I remember like Roxy's went from like they were steady at seven, eight, nine. Then they went to ten for like two years. Then they went to twelve, and then when they went started to go to like fifteen, everyone just transitioned to Dilaudid. Right. And like I don't know why, but like I guess like D's are better to shoot than like snort. But yeah. like all of my friends all became IV drug addicts like right after that. Yeah. So wait, w- what was the difference between like how'd you do? Is there a lot of tar in Florida? At the time, yeah. Really? I I I was stuck on a tar for a good like six nine months. Wow. Never how, seen tar. Never. How seen different it. was it than like the lot of? It wasn't really too different, man. I'm so crazy because I ask people shit like that all the time. They're always like, "Oxy heroin." Yeah. <laughs> Same thing. It really Some wasn't. Some people are though. like, "No, nah, good heroin is totally different." But I don't know. I Yo, mean, at that at that time at that time, like when I was really getting into that, mm-hmm. I was searching for like just to hit myself up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that was the fucking rush was just to get whatever in my body. Yeah. Like I didn't. I was. I had no time to think. This is different. Yeah. Like crack I really is like, like this. that. So what I always tell people, like, this is the difference between coke and crack. When you get coke, you look at it. You might even weigh it out. Mm-hmm. You might even be like, "Yo, this is light." You might even like judge it and be like, "Nah, this is garbage." <laughs> you might be like, "Yo, I'm gonna get an eight ball. I'm gonna get a gram." When you buy crack, you're like, "Yo, I got nine dollars," <laughs> and then you see Let it and you're just hit. like, <laughs> and you just smoke it like whatever. <laughs> What okay, really here's fourteen dollars. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like here's thirty seven dollars. Like right, it ain't right. you, yeah. like it, that shit is done by your eyeball, yeah. and you look at it, and like if it breaks a little hard, you're like a little excited, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I thought it was a coke. Hey, oh really? Coke. I, I, was, I was shooting it. Oh yeah, I was stingy. I was not stingy. I was snobby with coke. I'd be like, oh no, that garbage. Yay. <laughs> you know, I like wanted like fire coke, but when yeah. it came to crack, whatever. They ain't really bad crack. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I Unless smoked it's fake. A, like, I smoked my fair share amount of crack, but for me, it was fucking shooting, shooting coke. coke. Yeah. It was just like a whole, like, fucking, mm-hmm. oh my God. Like, I'm just thinking about it now. Like, the places that I've, like, done this shit in, it's fucking, and, oh, it's disgusting. It's nasty. So when did you go from doing perks to, like, being on the needle? We're still in the, the perk stage with um, with uh-huh. this girl. And like I said, she would go to work and I'm out fucking in the streets all day. Yeah. And I'm I'm hanging out with like, you know what I mean? People who are really using, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like shooting heroin and stuff. Only do perks at that time until I started hanging out with them, hanging out with them. And it was the cocaine. And then my boy would always, like I said, I was selling at the time just enough to fucking, mm-hmm. you know, support the habit. And I would always sell to this kid. You know, he was he was one of my boys while my girl was working and fucking mm-hmm. he would always shoot it up and I would just hang out there until she got out of work and you know by going over there so much and selling it and just doing a couple lines he's like bro you're fucking wasting it just shoot it just shoot it you know and he, he like fucking I'm like do you, well alright do it for me do you have a th- like mm-hmm. do you have like a needle or whatever and he's like yeah and he fucking literally points over it was like a um like a vase like 60 needles <laughs> all used from who knows who he's like just pick, just pick one <laughs> just pick one <laughs> I'm looking I'm Wait, like yeah, needle, is this needle. in a shooting gallery or this is no, at this his is house no this is his crib <laughs> he lives with his mom <laughs> yeah. it's not even like a crack host not like you know this what I mean like crib. he so fucking that's exactly how I picture where you grew right up, next to the library and like the flowers. <laughs> just right, right yeah, like, yeah, his, like you know, his, his mom didn't do drugs like that. His, his brother was like a, a good athlete, like D one school, and his sister was like you know a good person too. But you, you think know, they it was just just knew? him? Wow, they they, they you, knew he was like you know fucked up, but like yeah. you know not like that. So wait, so you just pick a random needle out of this jar? I just fucking picked one and i was just like here i choose this one and he's like all right man <laughs> Door and i three. took my shit out and then he i fucking shot me up and fucking with powder coke. powder yeah yeah and then fucking i just still i still remember the taste that everything. was before you hadn't even smoked crack before then no i never what? i never did I, at that point i never did heroin i never smoked crack i never did just i was just um perks just sniffing perks at that time mm-hmm. and after that fucking you hear the bells ring when you shoot coke yeah yeah like a lot right wild bro do you throw up every time (laughs) 
No, bro. I probably <laughs> I throw up every time I shoot <laughs> cocaine, dog. No. Every single time. At least you don't like, shit yourself. I literally, you I literally yourself? make sure that I'm by the toilet because I know it's fucking coming, dog. You throw up every time. Every time. Wow. I just get that crazy rush, bro, and the taste in my mouth. Like mm -hmm. I just always yeah. Oh. <laughs> that fucking taste, bro. One time I thought I was gonna die, bro. I went to this hotel that my mom was staying at with her fucking her boyfriend, and I fucking I had I, I don't know if I was she was I think she was giving me money at fucking some point whatever, and I fucking mm -hmm. I started busting my shit out when she's like just chilling or whatever. It was like I was still fairly new to shooting it, and I fucking I think I shot like too much, bro. And it was like the first time it ever happened to me. I fucking I blacked out like everything like. Like, you know when you flick the bad channel, it's just, like, black away static? Mm -hmm. Like, that happened to me. And, like, my breath started taking away. And I, I, all I can think of in my head, I'm like, I'm dying. I'm dying. And I just sat down, and I just fucking... It was, like, the longest, like, rush ever. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's till this day when, like, I get thoughts of, like, using... That's that that memory would pop in my head as a good thing. Like, yeah. that's how you could feel right now. <laughs> it's scary. Like That's what's going to happen. That's what, po yeah. like, pops in my head, like, as, like... Like, that was that the pinnacle feeling. high. Yeah, yeah, like, that was, like, the pinnacle of, of like... Almost dying. <laughs> almost right, dying right. of yeah. fucking shooting coke. But fucking, yeah, that's how it started, shooting coke and mm -hmm. then lying to this girl. And we ended up splitting up. And How we, old were you when you started shooting up? Maybe, like, 20-something. Okay, so, like, early 20s. Yeah, early 20s. Mm -hmm. Once she found that out, like, she didn't want nothing to do with me. Yeah. Like she only wanted to fucking sniff and, and smoke perks. Yeah, nothing too crazy. Nothing, like, yeah, nothing too crazy. <laughs> you know, fucking, so we split up, and, like, once that happened, like, I didn't have no fucking come up, and mm -hmm. I was still getting sick and shit. So I was just fucking, literally, I got, it gradually got worse. I didn't have, like, no friends to fucking go over. Unless it was like someone who was as bad and down order as I was. But I was pretty much just homeless at that point. Fucking walking the streets, doing whatever the fuck I could mm -hmm. to get some money. And that's when it got worse for like robbing and shit like that. Stealing. You know what I mean? Calling people and just taking shit and running like stupid yeah. shit like that. You know. You know how it goes. Story of my life. So <laughs> so what happened with you? What was going on with your family when you started using hardcore? Were you just like older, so they just like didn't really know what to say? Or? Yeah, 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 I was already out on my own, doing my own thing. Mm -hmm. Stopped talking. My my dad passed away before mm -hmm. I started using, so it was only my mom. And like growing up, I didn't really have a great relationship with her anyway. Mm -hmm. So it was like easy to separate and just like you know what I mean. Like I could fucking play on the phone for fucking five minutes mm -hmm. and then not talk to her again for a month, two months. Yeah, then to be chilling. I'm just chilling. You know what I'm saying? Did you have all that money too? Yeah, that was before. What happened? Did you use before the the money, or, or you? No, that, that was no. after. How'd you come up on those bridge? My my pops. Oh, he passed he, away. Yeah, he passed away of cancer, and and he had a lawsuit. Wow. So yeah. you got the settlement. I got the, me and my sister and my mom split like a mm -hmm. two million dollar settlement. Wow. I had like probably total like almost six hundred thousand. And that's when you started Christ. using. Or before you started using. No, that was before shit wow but that just listen that just shows like i got nothing to show for that bro that just shows you don't need the fucking you don't need drugs to be a fucking addict yeah you know what i mean i literally blew that fucking money what'd on you buy strippers, <laughs> strippers. <laughs> listen strippers first, thing, first thing he's y'all i'm gonna be that's how i know you were in florida at the time yo listen that's crazy i spent a <laughs> lot of bread on strippers oh all, my god every night i didn't have a job i didn't need to work you know what yeah. i'm saying so i was it's strippers and gambling was my really? two. Yeah. You didn't go buy a crazy whip or something? I didn't go buy a crazy whip. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't fucking buy a house. I didn't, buy, I didn't, I didn't buy, buy a house. house. I didn't invest in any businesses. <laughs> I was just a fucking degenerate. <laughs> you said gambling and strippers. Wait, you didn't buy no jewelry? Not no, a Rolex? I brought, no, I, brought, I didn't buy a Rolex. I, I did buy some jewelry, though. Okay, you bought some jewelry? Yeah, yeah, I had to look good in the strip. Like a couple chains? A couple, couple <laughs> chains, bracelet, yeah, ring. Wow. Yeah. I didn't buy. I I had a car. I had a car. It was like a plain ass like Nissan yeah. Altima. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like some regular you didn't get nothing crazy. I didn't get nothing. He crazy. thought the strippers needed it more than he did. So exactly. He, I, yeah. I I used to spend my days in the casino and my nights in the strip club for wow. a very long time. I did that. How long? And did this that last? is pre drugs. 
This is pre-drugs. Oh, yeah, you got a problem. This is pre-hardcore You should have just shot up in 19. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yo, so, yo, yo, I still yeah. have, like, thoughts about, like, if I was using during that time, I would you probably be, be dead. Yeah, for sure. For, for, sure. Sure. for sure. 100%. How long did that last? The money lasted probably two and a half years, three wow. years. That's longer than I thought. That's not bad. Yeah, six hundred k on strippers. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was I was responsible. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's wild. So hang on. So you start using. It gets pretty bad with this girl. Like like what happens after yeah, that? Yeah. So me me and baby mom got you know started doing our thing. That would that that became my life. It was like I was still s sort of fucking normal because before the using, like I had the job. I'd been at the job for mm -hmm. a while. I had my own spot. Like I was chilling mm -hmm. and. Probably over a span of like, say like six months, mm -hmm. I was good. I was you. I was happy using. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like I was going to work. I wasn't using in the morning. Like I would yeah, just especially use. with opiates. Opiates is like, for yeah, you can use and get a like and keep your job for six months to a year. Right, right, right. In the beginning, it's like that in that, that drug that you're like. Psh this is heroin you know right, what I mean? right, it's like that exactly. drug that you do that I never like had a job <laughs> yeah maybe you did it <laughs> yeah. no, Yo, I, in the streets. I remember yeah. when i when i when yeah i remember it got bad because i like i called the first time i called out of work mm -hmm. because i woke because i woke up sick and i couldn't get anything I was yo, it was like the scariest day of my life because I was good up until then. Like mm -hmm. I always had the money to fucking make yeah. sure I was good. Yeah, the first time you get dope sick, you never oh, forget it. Oh my god! The first bro. time you're like, what's going on? Someone explains yeah. it to you. You're like, you can't even believe my it. My baby mom's never told me about that part. Oh, oh she, yeah. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> You got she never told coming. me about that part. Yo. I always tell you, the first time I ever smoked crack, this guy goes, "It's just like coke." But you can eat on it and you can sleep on it. <laughs> you, and what? there's no come down. I said, hand that shit over to me. What? That's I'm all crazy. over that. Yeah. That, ma imagine you could do that though. <laughs> yeah, it'd be fucking. We'd be fucking chilling right now. Yeah, Bro. Be fucking chilling. I think you'd still be smoking crack. <laughs> I think recovery is like that. <laughs> no come down. No come down. Got it. You can eat on it way. and you can sleep on it. Yeah. Yeah, I remember like when we would talk. You would just tell me how, like, you know, you would be sick and you would just walk to work. And I just couldn't imagine that. Going like, to work? Yeah, like, just going to work. Cause, like, I think I, I felt I had to I go really to school. I was yeah. in high school. <laughs> you were so fucking young. Dog, you think work sucked? I'd be in social studies, like, <laughs> <laughs> can I use the bathroom? So I'd be in school, like, fucking taking a shit, throwing up, going through my phone. Come pick me up. I'm sick. Yeah. All my boys are like, no, nah, I'm at work. I'd just be like, what am I going to do? I'd be, like, thinking about, like, just, like, walking off, and then I would try to get a ride. Bro, going to school sick was the worst. Yeah. I learned, Yeah, you could fucking call out of work. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's like if I didn't go to school, they were gonna know. It would raise more right. flags. My yeah, mom would start yeah, tripping. Yeah, exactly. What's going on with you? And I had already done the I ate bad chicken like a hundred times. You know, what <laughs> I mean? I've done like oh, I must ate some bad Stop chicken. Eating chicken. Oh, I ate the fuck. I had a protein shit. Like I haven't even worked out in a year. I'm like oh, this protein shit I had was bad. So I had done that so many times. But like man, being sick for like days. There was days where I was sick where I just couldn't cop for like two days, Word. three days. A lot, and it's, it's it's the worst feeling, bro. There ain't nothing worse than like knowing that thirty dollars can solve all your problems. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. And and, and and fucking and it's like a fucking winning the lottery to Mission. try to get that yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, when like you do 30, come up, when you do come up on those thirty, I don't know why it was thirty, but for me, like blues, I needed three yeah. blues. It was thirty. When you come up on them thirty dollars, bro, nothing else matters in the world, bro. Nah, you go from like no. suicidal gun to your head. Should I land the tr train tracks to like <laughs> I'm fucking the Chill shit? Right? Right? Uh, what we doing today? You're like, in your life, fucking. Hey. <laughs> you don't even have to cop. When the money touches your hand, you're already like, yeah. Oh my you god! I was gonna it. say, you ever like yeah. once you see him and you like you're dead sick, like you're gonna you're gonna die. Once you see him, like it just goes away. And yeah, it's like yeah, I, you know you're gonna be. I always tell this story. So I remember this one time I was with my boy Merch, and he was like, "Look, I got a lick for us. There's this lady who serves pills in the trailer park." But obviously, like you got to rob her, and that was like my, that was like my only thing that I brought to the table. It's like I was right. just down to do it, you know. Right, right, right. He's like, I'm gonna hit her up. I'm gonna ask for seven pills. He's like, I'm gonna get four. I'll give you three. So I was like, fuck it. I'm super dope. So it's like day two of being dope sick. When he comes and picks me up, he's in the car with this kid. I forget his name, but he's like, I'm gonna go pick up Alzate. We're gonna go rob this lady. He's like, Oh, Alzate. When I get in the car, he looks at me. He goes, Oh, it's cool to see you. I owe this man 20 bucks. I'm like, man, 
So I know that after I do this lick, I'm only getting one pill. <laughs> Because he brought this other kid in the car. I know that he knew that if we copped, I would have right, to right, 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 pay right, him right. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember I get in the car and we drive to this trailer park and they're like, we're going to drop you off right here. And I remember the, the kid who was with us, not Mercy, the other kid was like new to this. He's like, what right. are we going to do? He's like, oh, Brian, Brian will do it. I didn't have no game plan, nothing. I remember I walked up to this crib. This lady was rocking on the porch. She was older. And she's like, hey, what's up? I was like, yo, I'm Jeremy's friend. What's up? And she was like, what's up? And I'm like, let me let me see the pills. <laughs> she's like, let me see the money. Oh. So I'm like, oh, let me see the pills. So I like walk up closer and she like has like a little cellophane bag. And I'm like, let me see the pills. And I was like, you know, going back and forth with her. I was like, I just want to make sure the eight two one fives. Just show me that they're the blues blues. Like, I don't oh, want no right. ETH. I don't want like the just fucking generic ones. Say, I want yeah, the eight two one five blues. And she's like, they're here, right here. And I grabbed them and I mushed her in the face and I ran <laughs> off. And I jumped. I remember I like, the first night I hit a woman. <laughs> like I pushed her in the. I mushed her face. I didn't hit her. I mushed her. Right. Uh, and that's, that's, a difference. Difference. that's a difference. It's a big difference. And I remember I took the pills and I jumped in back of the truck and it was like the bed of the truck i remember he took off and holding those pills to my chest uh -huh. was like it was just like the whole world could fall apart this was like this was all i needed bro yeah. and i knew i was getting one <laughs> i did all that for I one pill put them in my sock and been like bro she's calling the cops i couldn't get them and we just dropped off i don't it's know I, I, think I, I think i was happy knowing that i was gonna get one i might have gotten right. two but I knew I had to break off the other kids something. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I had enough to not be sick uh -huh. in that and, moment. and whatever. And that moment was everything. Bro, and that lady, bro, she didn't fuck around, bro. Her and like her whole little junkie people <laughs> were <laughs> after me for years, bro. I gave her, I gave her this kid's name who had robbed me because I used to pretend to be him right. whenever I did shit. And he, they showed up to their house <laughs> with like baseball bats and shit. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> My boy told me this story years later. He's like, bro, I remember this one time some random people came to my house saying I robbed them. Like, oh, really? <laughs> That's crazy. But, the whole uh, trailer park pulled up. <laughs> yeah. In Florida, it's like that, bro. We got, in, we got trailer parks next to like million dollar homes and shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes the trailer parks are nice as fuck. That's what I said, bro. I remember being like, bro, this shit is dope. It's, just, <laughs> right. it's not like that bad of a trailer park. You guys got yeah. a community pool and everything. You right. know? Like, this I'm is, chilling in here. Yeah. When did you get like really bad where you want to get clean? There's so many different times at the beginning where it was... So you try to get clean a whole bunch of times? Like, yeah, not like um necessarily get clean. Mm -hmm. Just like being at the point where there was no licks, there was no come-ups, and you I was just going to detox. Of money. Yeah. So oh, I, would, okay. I would go to detox. Yeah, I heard like in Massachusetts, that, like there's just like a bunch of detoxes that you can go and to. And mass, yeah, if you don't need like like down here with the insurance, insurance or whatever. You, you there's a, like insurance. a county run place, but it's just really short stays, right? That's what I heard. No. They, Long term so, stays? It's up to you. Like the detox is like what, like seven or ten days. And then from there Is it like a big line or hard to get in or not really? There was never a problem with me. I I've heard some people like, Oh, I have to wait till tomorrow. But it's That's never like it. like bark, like, I guess you like have bark. to sometimes it's like Dude, oh, sometimes it's like you're waiting to. forever. Yeah, it's not Bro, like I had that. An you gotta show up. Every I had an, morning. I had an employee yeah, no. of that place tell me, Oh, this is how you get in. First, you get wasted drunk. <laughs> Then you cover yourself in alcohol, like on all over your face, and then you tell them that you know you're suicidal and that you're withdrawing from alcohol hardcore, and you've been drinking for twenty years. Right, you get right in. And she was like, "That's how you get in." I was like, "Bro, you work here. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you can't be telling motherfuckers that." It's crazy. But it's like this is what an employee that worked there told me to do. Right. I was like. I thought she was gonna tell me like you fill out this form, you know. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what. No, they, I actually they they would tell me that too because I would want to get um certain medications. Yeah, and they would like and they say would say this and say that. Yeah, and, and I would get certain medications for my detox. Yeah, I was just pretty I was much a raging sleep for a week straight. <laughs> Never drank liquor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that, exactly liquor. to get like yeah. the benzos the, and the fucking the, yeah. yeah whatever they give you for the detox. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so you want to get clean a whole bunch of times. Like, what leads you to, like, wanting to get clean? Other than being, like, broke and just having no nowhere else to go. Bro, like, at that point in my life, I mean, it just got to the point where I was literally, like, it's so weird because there's so many, it's just so long and, like, of a period of time. It's not like, there's so many times where I'm just like, I want to get clean, but then I'll just go to detox and leave. Mm -hmm. But there's, like, certain points where, I, like, I remember clearly. Like, I'm still, like, I'm, like, 20 years old. And like downtown Lowell, 
it's like a street. It's called Appleton, where there's like real, like old time junkies, like you know, mm-hmm. like really bad, like you know, people that've been doing it like all their life, years, like the shelters years. down yeah. there. You yeah. know what I mean? That's where they go. And like, and I was there, and I'm like with all these older people, like you know what I mean, who've been doing this there like fucking thirty years. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, what the fuck am I doing? Mm-hmm. How how'd I get here? Like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? I, I I remember just a couple of years ago, I was just having fun and partying and drinking. Mm-hmm. And now I'm fucking, you know, in front of a homeless shelter with like, these, you know what I mean? These old people like trying to listen to hear if someone like, you know, has like a come up or a way to get <laughs> drugs or something. And Did that you was ever hear from like your mom or dad at any point in time? Yeah. So when I started using when at the beginning, when it was just the perks, because my dad was on, you know, he, that's what he was doing perks all the time. I actually fucking started using and I would I would you know if I would ask him for a perk or whatever and he He'd would give he one? would give me some. Wow. And yeah. and then after I got over that stage, when I started getting heroin and stuff like that, and I was in the streets in the streets, my mom was already in the streets, you know what I mean? You'd run into your mom using? Yeah, I'm I'm about to get to that right now. So <laughs> I remember I I had went to like this program and I was I did good for like like thirty days mm-hmm. and I ended up fucking up I relapsed I'm back in like the the streets or whatever in my city and I and I like a, it occurred to me I'm like I need to find my mom like I know she's like you know what I mean she she what always was your has, motive oh the cop like yeah cause she'll front is, you drugs she, yeah whatever like you know what I mean. So I'm I'm downtown with all these like older people who've been using for years. They mm-hmm. all know my like they all know my mom. You can literally go to my city and like go to, to like a bad neighborhood and be like, hey, where's Lisa? They're like, oh, I don't know. She fucking robbed me <laughs> fucking ten minutes ago. When you tell her, like, when you see her, tell her fucking, like, can I get half of my shit? <laughs> um, she robbed. Me. I don't mean to laugh. Yeah, no, no, it's it's funny, bro. You wow. know what I mean? But they oh, all know, man. like you know what I mean. They know the cops know my family, like you know, and you know because half my family's either selling drugs or using drugs. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They know, like detectives. They would always stop me, fucking whatever. I asked somebody, oh, she's actually staying with fucking so and so up the street. So then I, I go up the street and I, I'm looking in the window of this uh, like this house and I see her and I knock on the window and like she was kind of like skittish and she looked and like she went to answer the so. Not her. The guy answered the door, and I'm like, "Hey, my mom's here, Lisa. Can you tell her I'm here?" And he's like, "What the fuck?" So she and then I'm like, "I don't have nowhere to go." To her. She's like, "Yeah, come in." And the guy's like, "What the fuck?" And it was like his house, like some old guy. Mm-hmm. She's probably like using him for money and shit. And fucking the first thing she did is, "I'll be right back." And she comes back with like three grams of crack, and we just fucking. I was like, "I'm sick." Wow. She's like, "We'll do this for now." And- <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm gonna get some dope later. Wow. So we started, started smoking like huge boulders of crack. Oh my God. That's crazy. Yeah. So what, did you use with her a lot? Or that mm-hmm. was just like that one? So you guys, at that time. That's when you first linked up. Yep. And then we were kind of fucking like stuck together. Using like, together. You know, wherever like she went, I went fucking, you know, just wow. hit like I was like by her socks. Always had shit. You know, Mother old, and son. Mother and son. son is getting high. Just she, fucking using. She put you Bro, on some, to like a lot of shit or is it like vice versa? Uh no no no. Was I, like I was already shit. using. You're everything. already like in the street. I was already using everything. I was already shooting up. I did everything, and she she fucking always said like, "Don't fucking do this. Don't do that." But it was at the point where I was fucking in the already. street. You know, I was yeah. like homeless. You know what I mean? Like, so she was like, "Fuck it. You, you know, you're already gonna do it. Like wherever. So I'm just, I'm not gonna leave you sick here. Mm. So it just fucking took off like that, and fucking being like with her and shit. Like she fucking uses. I I thought I was around people like. Like that used and like they're like really bad, but like mm-hmm. like the, her and like the people that like the older like people who've been doing it all their life, they fucking like crazy <laughs> shit. Mm-hmm. I remember the first time, right? I, I probably was just started just shooting up, right? I was just getting bad. I'm at this. My mom tells me go to this place. This is like before this whole story. This is like way before. Like I just started using like bad, and she's like go here and like get this for me. Blah blah blah. blah. I go to this house. It's like a real like a crack house, like a mm-hmm. bad one. And there's these fucking people and this big guy, this big guy, he fucking uses, fucking passes out in the shower, right? This lady, these two ladies, like this fucking asshole did it again. Take him out. I'm like, and I'm like the first time I'm seeing this, I'm like, you need to fucking like call the cops. Like, shut the fuck up. Close the door. And I'm like, <laughs> I didn't close the door. I was just staring. I was in shock. She fucking pulls out this thing, pulls out um, a gram of Coke. Right and shoots him up with a gram of coke. As he's over the, as Narcan, and yeah. he just fucking gets up, bro. <laughs> I'm wow. like, what the fuck? 
And like wow. that's the type of shit I would see, like you know, hanging out with like you know her and her friends. Yeah, and her oh. and her not friends, but like just people, people she, she knew throughout the city. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah, her fucking. And what were you getting there? Crack for her? I think it was like yeah, I think it was like crack. Mm -hmm. And that was before you even fucked with it. Yeah, or that's when you first started. Like the very out. beginning of that, like I was, yeah. I was, you know what I mean. That shit was fucking wild, bro. But fast forward, like whatever. And when I when I met up with her that time. We we were side by side using wow. for for a long time. What about your dad? Would you run into him? Uh I would. Yeah, I would definitely go over to my dad's house sometimes too. Um, but he was just kind of like just into the pills. He was still kind of like functional, mm -hmm. but like always just on pills and stuff. And like he would smoke crack and stuff like every blue moon. You know gotcha. what I mean? I remember like I broke into his house one time when he was gone. I fucking threw a huge party in his house, destroyed <laughs> everything, bro. <laughs> oh my God. This is before I was, this is like, like my brother's time drinking. This wow. is before I was fucking, but he was most pissed about the fucking cat and someone's shit in his tub. He left me a crazy voicemail. He's like, you motherfucker. He's like, it's fucking. He knew it was like, you. Yeah, yeah, right off the rip. He knew it was me. He's like, because I had like fucking 40, 50 people in his like little ass apartment. Uh-huh. He's like, my fucking house is trashed. He's like, there's fucking, there's cocaine on the table. There's fucking liquor everywhere. He goes, someone spray paint fucking Gertie, which is his cat. He fucking <laughs> loved it. And you lock him in the fucking basement. And, and at that, the very someone end of the- Someone spray painted the cat. The, 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 I, get, I don't know. He's, that's what he said. He, over, he over exaggerates, but I don't know. It could have been true. And then he fucking, the last thing he said on the, on the fucking um, voicemail was fucking- and who the fuck shit in my tub? <laughs> <laughs> and then he hung up. <laughs> that shit was crazy, but he was kind of like just the pills and shit. You know what uh -huh. I mean? I would go over there and shit, sleep wow. when, I, when I had to. But it got to the point where I couldn't even uh -huh. go over there. All right, so look, so what happens in your story where like it starts to get really bad? Did you try to get clean so, a bunch of times too? I was introduced to the program. Yeah, so you knew like there was a solution. Right, so even when I got out of the program the first time, like I was still cool with everybody in recovery. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That was like half of my friends were still in recovery. Mm -hmm. And I used to just come around and go out to dinner. I just be, would be the one person that smoked weed. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But they, they would fucking bring they me along. Care. Yeah, they yeah. didn't care at all because I was chilling. So I already knew a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. And just like him, like when I first was getting clean, I was in and out of detoxes. Like I, I wasn't willing to do like a program. Mm -hmm. I just, I just didn't want to be sick. Yeah, that's all it was. It wasn't like oh, I need to get clean. I need to change my life. It's like damn, I need somewhere to go for a little while until yeah. I figure figure something out. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it got to a point where I was accepting that was my life, and that like I just had to fucking figure shit out and fucking. Mm -hmm. So I went in and out of detox for years. There would be times where, like, I would hit a meeting up, and I would be high, but I would still go to the meeting. It's like a safe place. Right. I knew it was a safe place because, obviously, by myself, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had a girl at the time that, that for, like, years didn't know I was fucking using. I was fucking rocking sweaters in July mm -hmm. to cover my arms, you know what I'm saying? Like, she started catching on after a while. Mm -hmm. That happened in and out of detoxes. I went back to New York because I tried to do the geographic thing. I was like, Florida ain't working for me. Look at what it did to me. It turned me, <laughs> Florida turned me into a fucking junkie. I knew I shouldn't have came out here. I'm going back to my fucking hometown. That's where my fucking people are. So I went, I went to New York mm -hmm. and same shit. You know what I'm saying? I thought it was going to be different. I thought I was going to, ju I just needed to get away. Mm -hmm. And like, I found it out there and it was, it was this, the same, same cycle shit. started over, but it wasn't just going to detox. It was like going to detox and trying to get clean. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Going to meetings and getting 45 days, 60 days and fucking up, but like struggling and really trying and, and like wanted it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And then like the more I went, the more I, I, I kept going, kept coming back. Like, it just started more and more to seep in into my body that, like, there was another life for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't have to do this. Yeah. I didn't have to make that decision. I'm, like, super fucking, like, I need to have it right now. Immediate gratification. Mm -hmm. So, like, when I didn't get a new car in 60 days and, and $100,000 in the bank, I was like, this fuck is this. not, yeah, yeah, fuck this shit, bro. This ain't fucking working. Mm -hmm. And Your I would roommate's parents called like, oh, we got him a new car. Like, like, <laughs> I fucking hated that shit. I oh, seen that, that shit was so much. Worse, dog. I was getting mm -hmm. resentments fucking early. 
but I, I kept coming back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because like when that started happening, I didn't want to use. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I was fucking up because I was hiding feelings, and then it was, and then it always got to a point where I was like just using just to fucking go through my day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I I wasn't using because like I really wanted to get high. You know what I mean? And that ha and that was like that for a while. It was just using just so I can wake up and get the fuck out of bed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And yeah. I was okay with letting that shit carry on me through the day and then, you know, mm -hmm. using just to go to sleep and like I yeah. did that for a long time. It wasn't even about getting high anymore. Yeah, I remember when I got clean, I remember just like not being able to sleep and just being like, man, if I got high, I'd be able to go to sleep and like I remember like literally not sleeping for days just because I'm dope sick. When you're dope sick, it's like you when you have the flu and like you just can't get comfortable and like you just have this anxiety and you're hot and you're sweaty. And it's like, dude, I would like fucking break into a car thinking I was gonna like bust this crazy lick and I'd get like fucking <laughs> 72 cents. I've done that. I've done and then that. break into another car, bro. This one time I broke into a car, there was a two dollar bill in a Bible. I was like, two dollar, you know. And it's like, dude, I'm doing this for that. like four hours. <laughs> You know, and I fucking go to the dope man to get, like, two pills to not be <laughs> sick. And then, like, I go to sleep at four in the morning, and then, like, I fucking have to go to school the next day. And, like, dude, like, my, my using was never glamorous, you know? It was, like, right. a coin star, pawn shop. Yeah. And some people have, like, a, like, I've interviewed fucking this one dude who has, like, real stories of, like, selling kilos of heroin in Turkey and fucking right, the right, Philippines right, right. and shit. Like, shit. All this money and, like, this crazy lifestyle. Yeah. Like, dude, like, my shit was, like... Digging in the couch. Grimy. Yeah. yeah, grimy, you know? Grimy. I can relate to that. I've done that in fucking mm -hmm. a couple of times. I think the, the biggest come up I've had, because I know kids that got like hundreds of dollars. Me too. My boy would be like, yo, I got a gun and a laptop. Ex I'd be like, thing. oh, word. I'd be like, breaking in the car is getting changed. I got fucking, <laughs> the biggest thing I've ever gotten was a fucking, I fucking opened the back seat of this car, dude, and fucking, <laughs> in the bag, bro, there's a fucking... There's like a shirt to like TJ Maxx and it had the receipt, the the, the tag on it. So you returned and, it. And it was, it was 19.99, bro. And I was like, yes, <laughs> bro. I fucking so wow. walked fucking like th four miles to like an AJ. I returned it and fucking got, the, got 20 <laughs> bucks, bro. Fuck yeah. I remember this one time I broke into a car and I took their Tom Tom. Remember those GPSs? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And I remember I took it to the dope man and I was like, "Yo, what can I get for this?" He's like, "What is that?" I was like, "It's a GPS." He's like, "You stole this?" I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Bro, this is a GPS." <laughs> and I remember being like, "What?" He's like, "They know where we are." And I remember being like, "I never thought of that." <laughs> I don't think they. Can. I don't no, know. They, they can't. Nah, nah. Especially with those I things. I remember I was in the niggas ain't know what them shits did. I was uh, like, "What?" That GPS shit was like fucking. Yo, I remember he freaked out like I was the fence, like I had a wire on. He was like, yo, bro, don't be bringing no GPS around here. Yeah, I yeah, was like, probably just want some crack. I stole a bunch of those shits, too, with my brother. That was, yeah, that, that was a good one, because it's in. you could just see it, and you're like, oh, man. Yeah, yeah. I stole that in the drink. We would steal those in the um, drinking like phase. Like, my drinking phase. Not yeah. even, like, hardcore. Like, we were doing that to get fucking alcohol, dude. <laughs> fucking just like a fucking 14-year-old kid uh -huh. going to, like, Parking lots where there's fucking mad cars, cars and just, and just into looking all and seeing it would shoot it with a BB gun, break the window. Wow, fucking! It was just like more of like mm -hmm. of like an excitement thing, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Like not even because you're sick. Mm -hmm. You guys got clean basically around the same time, which is so cool. So how did you guys link up? Like what led to like how did you guys meet? Yeah, you guys yeah. met in halfway. We got halfway. yeah. We so halfway. how did you get down here and get clean? The last of my using phase. This is another thing, one of those things I like I fucking remember like mm -hmm. you know, like too, vividly. Vividly, yeah. like it was yesterday. You know, about to take my son to the movies, you know, and I haven't seen him in like, you know what I mean, months. And she like was about to let me take him to the movies. And we got into an argument over something stupid, probably something I did, and like she kicked me out and she at the time she was living she was living in New Hampshire. Like, mm -hmm. So I'm fucking walking like from in a different state back to Massachusetts mm -hmm. on like the highway. And I call fucking this girl I know I'm close with. And I'm like, I can't do this no more. Like, what the fuck, bro? Just like had nowhere to go. I was tired. I was sick as fuck. And I was, and the only thing I cared about at that time was just laying on a bed and getting sleep. I mm -hmm. didn't give a fuck about the withdrawals or nothing. Like, I just wanted to get like a good night's sleep because I just been in the streets for so long. Mm -hmm. And I call her and she's like, you know, I'm going to call my sister because she was down here mm -hmm. and she worked at a, a program down here. And I'm gonna see if I can get you in. And then, your sister was clean, or she just happened to work at a treatment center. Or her sister, her, her sister, her sister was clean down here. Gotcha. And she worked at a, a treatment center. center. 
So she called her and then she called me back. She's like, all right, I'm going to, you know, pick you up and we'll set something up. So she picked me up. She, we, I was talking to her sister on the phone and she's like, all right, you have to write a letter first. I wrote a letter, whatever. I sent mm -hmm. it to her, how bad I wanted to get clean. And they, they, they gave me a scholarship. She's like, all right, you, you got the scholarship, you know, I'm your flight. I got you a flight for like Monday and it was like Saturday, it was like mm -hmm. Sunday or Saturday. And I was like, oh, like what the fuck? It like all happened so fast. And at this point, by the way, I forgot to, to mention, I was on the fucking, the methadone. The methadone. For, I was on like 160 milligrams of methadone. Wow, 160? 160 milligrams of methadone. The wafers or the liquid? Liquid. I would go there and I'd just take my dose mm -hmm. and leave. It's crazy because, like, I know you, like, you were so young. It's, like, so sad to see, like, a motherfucker 20 years old on methadone. It's, like, bro, that's, like, the last, last result. Like, right, the last right, thing. Right, right. And, like, I get it. People are dying of fentanyl now. My mom's so, one who told me. She's, like. Yeah, yo, it hit that fentanyl. Or hit that uh, hit methadone. methadone. So, yeah. that way, like, if you don't have, like, money that day, you don't have, like, a money to come off. Yeah, it's a and good And I'm, like, hustle. that's actually, like, smart. I'm, like, yeah. you don't have to be sick all day. And it, you get a bonus. I've done method like, like a, a couple of times. But I remember this old lady who was like an old addict or whatever. She told me she was like, because she knew how young I was. She's like, look, when you turn 18, you got to start taking subs. You want to get on methadone. You want to try get, getting like a whole bunch of pills. She's like, so you can sell your pills for crack. And then she's like, if you get on Suboxone, you can at least sell your Suboxone. And then you won't be sick all the time. Because she would see how rough I was like, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, out of breath, <laughs> showing up like, yo, I got like 40 to box, you know. And, what she, can I get? and she'd be like, man, like you really got to like maneuver your hustle. And yeah. she would try to get me to doctor shop. And I'm like, yo, I know how to doctor shop. Like I, I get people to do it and they break me off their scripts i'm not old enough right and she would be like damn that sucks, that sucks. you're already there yeah, yeah. i was like it's crazy i can't wait to turn you. 18 you know <laughs> that's sad man when i see kids that are like on maintenance drugs at young ages it's the worst decision i've ever done yeah was to but now with fentanyl now i'm kind of like i don't know it's like dude you're really playing russian roulette using yeah I, you ain't never heard of someone die on methadone you're like you ain't gonna really die on methadone unless you're like abusing your take-homes or some shit you right. know yeah yeah, you yeah nowadays that it's kind of like all right it's better than that alternative but it's just such a crazy fucking handcuffed life yeah you're stuck you know? to that yeah so after fucking so they detox you off methadone no no detox bro I, I got down i got down here you know she picked me up from the airport got to the program and at the time they they did have like a little maintenance thing going on there mm -hmm. so a lot of the the, the yeah. other clients they were on you know a benzo and an opiate mm -hmm. out of everyone there bro i'm the only one in groups and stuff just like sick as like fuck. sick as fuck my legs couldn't stop at nighttime was the worst i got were you grateful to be legs. there you like a little well yeah at first off. bro like i was sick before i got there and then when the first the first night i got there i actually slept good what? and i was fu yeah bro it was crazy I slept good and I was just looking. I was like, this place is, um, because I'm used to like state run facilities yeah. up in Massachusetts. I get to this place and n now I know it's, you know, it's what, whatever. Luxury treatment center, whatever. Yeah. But you thought, oh yeah, at the time you thought it was like. At the time I thought, I'm like, wow, this, this, thing, it's like a resort. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing like there's palm trees outside my window. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, like it was like so nice. Yeah. I'm like. I, I need to tell everyone back home about this. This is crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Everyone will stay clean. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. <laughs> and, um, Write a letter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I would go through that that treatment process. I remember being sick for like 30, 45 days. Mm -hmm. Just like withdrawals. Because with methadone, it's not like um like a, like a any yeah. uh, Percocet or anything like that, like a weak detox. Yeah, it's you're, like a 30 you're days. You're sick for a month. You know what I mean? And especially with no detox medication. That's crazy. I would have lost my shit. That was like the first thing I was like, bro, I need to be on. I thought, because I thought they detox people with methadone. So I remember like when I went to detox, I was like, they have to have methadone. Like I'm not going unless they already have that shit. Like when I get to the door, <laughs> like I'm not like going to uh, wait around because they, 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 they lie they to you. you. Like, yeah, oh yeah, we'll you. get you. Yeah, yeah. And then like they give you like some Advil and shit or whatever. <laughs> I was like, bro, I need to get like... I need, because I thought it was methadone they gave me Suboxone the first time, but like, man, that shit sucks. Not getting okay. medicated oh, literally or waiting that's for the it. the worst. Yeah. So it's literally, it was like the worst, but. Mm -hmm. I've walked out of a couple places because. You just couldn't wait, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go walk outside and not have anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's better. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that, that's. I'll be back next week. Guys <laughs> 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 got your shit together. <laughs> Yeah, you leave and you're still sick regardless. Yeah. It's it's like fuck, man. 
but that's how that's how I I ended up getting down here. I knew somebody, and mm -hmm. you know, I I was grateful enough to to get into a program. I, I didn't have anything. I didn't have insurance. Wow. I, you know, and before I left, um, she actually took me and got me like a couple pairs of um boxers, shirts. Cool. Um, you know what I mean? Just a couple things so I can mm -hmm. have when I get down here because I literally had the clothes on my back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My shoe. I was just telling. I forget where I was. Just literally just telling this. I remember getting getting down here and like half of my shoe up from where my toes are was just missing. Mm -hmm. Every all my socks just my left foot had was just gone. <laughs> so <laughs> you know what I mean? I had nothing but coming down here. Nothing. That's cool. And that's how I got to a treatment and then mm -hmm. I, I ended up going to completing the program. Uh -huh. I was the only one out of everyone who completed. Wow. Only one out of like it's the only 80, kid is clean. Yeah, still to this day to I'm the, the day, only one. And that group that stayed clean. I'm not my group of friends out of the, the whole yeah, center. Yeah, the whole treatment center. Out of that center because they would stay clean for like X amount of time and then they ended up relapsing. Wow. Till this day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some people had a good, a long time and then they ended up relapsing. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one till this day who, who stayed clean. Wow. And then after I completed the program, I went to Halfway, got a job at Carabas. Nice. You know, I, didn't, I know mad people who work there. It's so funny. Yeah, I would walk, bro. <laughs> everyone from, who works there is like a, a soldier. Like everyone who works there is bro, like. I good... walked from from Sunshine uh -huh. to fucking Carabas. Fire every day, bro. You were a server, or a bus boy. I was um, a yeah. host. You were a host. I was a host. Wow. Yeah. No, it's a chick job. It, I I didn't know what the fuck it was at the time. I didn't know shit. And they were just like, "You're gonna stand here." And you ain't never, you ain't never worked. <laughs> you ain't yeah. never worked at a restaurant before. <laughs> no. Oh, I wow. never, like I said, like That's I didn't like, really why? have. They were like, like nigga, just stand there, <laughs> and fucking. Just stand there. No, dude, I was like I said. What's your experience? I got nothing. Hey, hey, I worked in the street. No, 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 no. I lied. I lied. I said I had experience. I yeah. said my my aunt owned a restaurant and I would serve there. <laughs> and I fucking own no restaurant. Yeah. You know what I mean? But they they were like, all right, well, you're gonna do this and that. Like like I said earlier, like I never really had yeah. jobs like that. You're like, oh, my mom taught me how to cook. Crack. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so what about you, Lois? Like, how'd you get clean? Did you go to treatment? So, yeah, I went to treatment this last time in New York. I went to a state-run facility that was a long-term, mm -hmm. 92 days, all-male facility, priests walking around everywhere. Wow. Yeah, totally. Where was this? This was in upstate New York. Wow. So you got clean at an upstate facility? Yeah. Like a county-run place? Yeah. Yep, got clean there. Did um, you feel a certain way? Like, have you gone to nice facilities and this was like your first no. county run? You're, you're used to county run facilities. Yeah, I'm used to that. Okay. I, it was great because we could smoke there. You can't smoke in nowhere. In New York. Yeah, in New York. New to York's find a place crazy, you could smoke bro. is fucking, that's like mm -hmm. gold. Yeah. I was willing to fucking travel two and a half hours. To smoke. Just to, so have I could smoke. ice cold Newport. <laughs> yeah, have an ice cold Newport because I did go in fucking... In the, in the winter but yeah i got i got clean i was actually so i was in and out in new york anyway you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying i would get i would go to detox go to like a little two-week program or whatever mm -hmm. get in the program get some time clean relapse and i kept doing that this last time i went to treatment was the longest stay and then when i got out i already had a support jumped in the program mm -hmm. like there was something about that place that like allowed me to develop a relationship with god and okay. I, and to this day, was that the first spiritual, like religious type of place you had been to, or that's the yeah, first no, one yeah, that, that was the first? I would never do that. Yeah, like, but it was just because they could someone smoke. told me that like it's a religious place. I'd be like, I'm good on that. <laughs> I'd rather be sick. Yeah, and this was also 90 days. So that 90, 90 days, days bro. I tell people all the time, bro. I was like, dude, there ain't no replacement for time, bro. Like time no. clean is like. Because when people com when people complain about like oh they're they're changing my discharge date you're like oh five <laughs> more days you know you're just like bro it's like it's like dude they're trying like being twenty days clean and being thirty days clean is totally different. 100%. When you leave that like those extra t ten days and is such an is advantage a huge deal. such an advantage bro I when you get out. I told my boy I was like you know my boy went to treatment I was like bro you should stay forty five days he's like forty five. It really should stay 60 days, you know? <laughs> I wish I could mandate you to be there for 90 days, you know? But I'm like, bro, that that little time. Yeah, it means everything, man. And I just always feel like people who, like, are, are antsy to leave aren't ready Listen, to leave. You it's, know not, I mean? it's, it's not a coincidence that the one time that I actually spent that much time in treatment, yeah, I'm exactly. still clean. <laughs> it's the one statistic that rings true across the board. Right. The longer your time in treatment, 
the higher the success rate. Yes. Period. Yep. End of story. Like, Period. like, tell like that's what time. it is, bro. It's like time. That's why, like, you should do an IOP or fucking halfway or mm -hmm. or some type of structured environment as everything. long as possible, bro. Yeah. You got people like six weeks clean, like, oh, I'm done with halfway. I'm like, <laughs> all right, you know. I, we, I've only been it. trying to stay clean for like <laughs> seven <minutes>. years. <laughs> yeah, you know. What I mean? We did halfway for what was it like over a year, right? Yeah, for sure, year. definitely, for right. Yep. Yeah, and like, bro, people think that's crazy. But when you go to halfway, when someone says you're going to be here for a year, you're like, no, nah, you know? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. it's just like when you start using, when you start using, someone's like, yo, you're going to be smoking crack and for 10 years. You're like, nah, you know? But like, <laughs> you know, little by slowly, that yeah. shit starts to happen, you All know? And like, recovery is the same way. It's, it's like, years, yeah. you know, it's, it's like this one day at a time where you start to see the benefit of staying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you start Absolutely. to see like, well, like, like, what am I really j jumping ahead of? And then you see other people fucking right. use and come right back and yeah. use and come right back. Yeah. And it's like, uh, like recovery's taught me like every shortcut has been a long cut. Like every, every time, time I've ever tried to like do something like a quick, easy way. Yeah. Whenever yeah. someone tells me something that seems easy, I'm just like, I don't know. Like, I'm just not. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you're like, yo, this is gonna be really hard. It probably won't work out. Like, don't do it. It's difficult. I was like, I like that. You know, yeah, like, yeah. like, that's the road I'm trying to follow. I'm not trying to. When you're like, yeah, it's gonna be super easy. It'd be like, no problem. Like, I don't know. Talk so about, I, let's talk about God a little bit. So, yeah, that's yeah. how you got introduced to like your higher power, At, you know, your relationship. 100%. In that, in that facility, I got into praying. I used to, mm -hmm. I, I went to Mass every Sunday first time that like i really started praying was it like it christian or catholic the I catholic was the more strict old school one yeah they were strict and old school for okay sure for yeah a hundred percent was there one person there that really like like helped you out with that nah you know why because like at this point i had been a part of the program for so long so you hadn't understood the concept right, of God. Already, like right i was at that point where i was willing to do whatever yeah you know this what is saying? the one part i'm missing this is the one part i'm missing this mm -hmm. is always the 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 one thing that like i always believed in god but i never had a relationship with god mm -hmm. you know what i mean everything was a foxhole prayer it was never like praying you know and, and being in gratitude it mm -hmm. was like please get me out of this or like i swear i'm not gonna do this no more just like please get me out of this mm -hmm. sickness and I actually started praying and, and, and being grateful and, and just thanking him, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Instead of like asking for favors. Yeah. And the acceptance piece for that was the was the biggest thing, you know, is just letting go and saying, yo, nothing fucking has worked for me. Every idea that I ever came up with did not work for me. What the fuck can I lose? Mm hmm what the fuck can I lose by doing it this way and seeing what happens? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and I did. I did my 90 days in there. I went to halfway after, did three months, three more months. I don't know. Something in me was just like, yo, you need to go back. Mm -hmm. You know what I to mean? To Florida. To Florida. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So like a lot of times, like I've honestly learned so much from watching people because like, like when I first got clean, I was like, I ain't going to make no moves. I'm just going to like <laughs> let everyone else make moves. Because, like, dude, I got clean with a bunch of other young kids. And right. I would see people, like, you know, like, they share all the Gucci shit at the meeting. And then, like, you leave and they'd be like, well, I ain't doing step work. Like, right, like right, I ain't right. going to get a sponsor. Or, like, are you yeah, really going to yeah. do that shit? And I'd just be like, well, I mean, I'm going to do it. And, you know, like, <laughs> like, I remember, like, like this girl even clowned me one day. She was like, you really do step work? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, Pfft like laughing at me you know <laughs> loser <laughs> geek <laughs> and uh you know but it's like when i first got clean like i saw like so many people and then when i saw them use it like blew my mind because there was people you know your first year clean you see all the people ahead of you use right so like, your first year clean you see people with six months clean use you see people nine months clean use right and you start to like you know i started to move different like oh mm -hmm. shit you know what was that person doing that i wasn't doing and yep. I started to like kind of be have this fear of like I don't want that to be me, and then you would like I remember this one time, bro. There's this one kid. He was like super popular in meetings. He had like the finest girl. He drove a Benz or whatever, and it's like, bro. Two months later, he's sharing a burn his eye, or crying his eyes out. He's like, I lost everything again. Yeah. And I remember just being like, damn. Mm -hmm. So like for you, did you see a lot of that, or have you been in the program so long that you kind of like had already so long? I've been in so long. I just came in and just would both feet ready to fucking do a 90 and 90 you were like, just like i already know what to do i already know what to do i did my 90 and 90 mm -hmm. i did i did my 90 and 90 out in new york and then i did it again when i had six months clean out mm -hmm. here 
like I was ready. I knew yeah. I knew I had to get a sponsor. Were you like and, like trying? Were you uh, like one of the dudes like trying to help everybody when you first got in? Because you yeah, knew so much about the exactly. program. Were you yep. like that? And and I was I was sharing that Gucci shit, but I was also walking the walk. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And like it was so funny because. I shared this shit the other night. Like, I had walked in a meeting. I had only been down here 30 days, and people already knew my name. Mm -hmm. What's up, Los? What's up, yeah. Los? Yeah, I remember the first I time. I, you. Remember the first <laughs> time I seen you at a, a meeting down here in Fort Lauderdale? Everybody like knew you, and I was like, "Oh, this cat must be from like New York or some shit." Just like moved back down <laughs> on yeah. vacation. He's got yeah. years. A lot of people like, had knew you. Yeah. 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 I was. Yeah. I came in with, with ready to go. I came That's in cool. ready to go. I was done. So then, did you guys like? Were you guys roommates, or you guys just linked up? And then started like chilling. You didn't go to you didn't go to Middle River first. I was at I was at the halfway house that we ended up at. I was there first. Mm -hmm. He was at some other place, and then he he left, and then and then came to, to they Middle shut River. down. Oh yeah, the place the shut place down. That was that shut down because it was like so bad. I don't know oh, whatever what happened. Yeah. Like I think they that's just I think the whole podcast. yeah that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> <laughs> they fucking. They the whole place shut down. Talk about South Florida real quick. Hey. Yeah, that's a whole that's a whole nother podcast. But right yeah, there. no, we got we went we he came over to 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 Middle River and we just I don't I don't really know what like it was just our vibe just fucking. I caught. think the first time I met you though was actually <laughs> at the the basketball court. I think oh, you, yeah, you were playing yeah, basketball. Yeah, oh, yeah, playing ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's didn't, what it was. And you weren't even I didn't know that we were gonna be roommates or anything. Right. Like we just balled up together, and then that was yeah, it. That's we when I bust your ass. That's right. That was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he woke up. Is he nice? No, Lo 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 I'll nice. give it to him. He's nice. He's nice. But hey, he, anytime, he can't sleep on me though. Anytime we play with anybody from out here, oh, mm -hmm. we killing him. Yeah, me and him. Oh, really? Always like on top. Yeah, like the man. white. I got low. I got low. Like the white man can't jump through. Him. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah I'll be. Yeah, dun sure. I was dunking it and everything. <laughs> Shut up. I have. Hey, you can't dunk. Did I not dunk? He dunked it, but it wasn't a real. It dunk. wasn't like like cocking back yeah, under the legs, yeah, but yeah. I can get up there. You know and how jam it was. Uh, like on the fucking. You got, you got ups like that. <laughs> yeah. You don't got ups like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah he can he can get wow. up to do that. He can get That's up. That's crazy. Nothing crazy like yeah, no he... LeBron shit, but yeah. Y'all should see me out there, bro. Now, bro. No, just... <laughs> <laughs> we already know how you are. <laughs> No, but that's the first time I met him. And then after the place shut down, everyone's like, you know, whatever. Like halfway's done. I'm just gonna like, you know, move back with my my mom, and I'm gonna go live with my uncle. Or, and like mm -hmm. everyone's like, like kind of going to separate. And I'm yeah. just like, what the fuck, man? Someone said, oh, this is halfway over here. And then I ended up going there. Mm -hmm. He wasn't even home when when they were like when they put me in mm -hmm. with him. Somebody else had already said, oh, you you're gonna be with Rumi. with Los. Okay, with Los. He's mad cool. Da da da. And I'm like, yeah, I, think, I actually think I was playing basketball with him. So whatever. I get in the room. He wasn't there. And the room was fucked up. And I was just, I called him up. They gave me his number. I'm like, yo, I'm switching this whole room around. And he's like, he's like, yeah, I bet. And I, I like made it nice when he came home. And then... <laughs> Well, since that day, we were fucking. Yeah, but he tried. He made. He's. It, it sound like he tried. No, no, it wasn't dirty. you. No, it wasn't you. Uh, it was just other, like the. the yeah, other, is that on the record? Is that, that not Yeah, Los is not yeah. dirty. Okay. It wasn't him. He does wash his ass. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was the halfway room. Okay. It was like the furniture was just fucked up. Like the way they had it set up was like crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? When I first met him, I needed my space. You're like, yo, I'm gonna switch this shit around. I need to, like, our breads need to be further apart at first. Like, <laughs> yeah. when I first met him. At first. At, yeah, at first. <laughs> yeah, halfway is crazy because like, I have so many friends that, like, I grew up with that I try to get clean. They're like, man, I ain't living in halfway. Like, people think that a halfway is for people that, like, don't have another place to go. <laughs> like, bro, a lot of people in halfway ha could go get an apartment. Right, right, right. Bro, exactly. I know motherfuckers in halfway have a job, have a car, and a wife and, chill and ch right, children right, right. down the that, street right. that and are like, yo, I'm choosing. Home. I'm choosing to do sober living because it's conducive to my recovery just as if I would go fucking join a gym or right. I would go fucking do some extra shit, like take a fucking class on something. Like, uh -huh. this is an extra environment. And, like, bro, when you live with people, you learn surrender. You learn patience and tolerance. You get to see other people. When you're down, people can call you on your shit. Like, bro, when you live with your family, you have a bad day. They're just like, whatever, take yeah. the trash out, motherfucker. You know right, what I mean? Exactly. Here, it's like, you know, like the camaraderie, especially at that halfway. Like, that halfway has just been, like, known for, like, yeah, that, a lot yeah. of people staying clean in groups. Right. Exactly. Oh, yeah, you know, where as, like, a treatment center, you might go to a treatment center, maybe, like, one of 50 people stay clean for a year, maybe a couple people stay clean for a year, but I've seen whole squads of halfway houses come out of there, yeah. clean for 
five, six, seven, eight years. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. you know that brotherhood, that camaraderie, mm -hmm. you know, is so important because you guys met in halfway and you know still. Yo, we got we got super close. Mm -hmm. We're going to meetings every night. You know what I'm saying? Uh, every um, night, every single night, mm -hmm. it was like we were going out to the club. Hell yeah! And literally, that's how it was. When he <laughs> says it was like we were going to the club, what? I, I like to get home, people to like take a shower. I was already clean, and I still I used to take, take another, a shower, take another shower, put cologne on, bitch, yeah, I had to get, fit, you get know some nice mean? things on, yeah. and go to a meeting. I know because yeah. people are always like, oh, that meeting, like whatever meeting, oh, that's like a fucking a fashion a show. fashion show, whatever. Yeah. I'm like, dog, motherfuckers ain't never did shit in years. Yo, you know, know what me. I mean? I was like, bro, motherfucker haven't, it, hasn't put cologne on in years. <laughs> Let that's the first shine. time they seen some girls, you yeah, know, bro. It's like shine. we were going crazy. Because when you tell out, when you tell people that aren't in recovery, that yo, like this is the meeting that addicts go to and they get dressed up and cool, and to get dressed up and like have right, fun. Right. People are like, that's cool. Right. That's what you guys do on Friday night. Yeah. Like outsiders are like, yo, that's dope. Mm -hmm. People in recovery are like. Oh, that's not real recovery. But it's like, bro, it's like, I'm going to a meeting. You're going to a meeting. I listen right. to a speaker. You listen to a speaker. I hollered right. at a girl. You hollered at a girl. Like, let's keep it real. Everything's different know? for different people. Especially, mm -hmm. like, for me, I needed that, bro. Yeah. I fucking needed that. It mm -hmm. wasn't like, if I went to, like, a meeting and it was just, like, like at the time, I could say it like a boring meeting. Uh -huh. Now I know it's like, you know, there's a lot of recovery that people are speaking yeah, yeah, yeah. of. You know what I mean? But at the time, I'm like, that's a boring meeting. I don't want to yeah. hear about no step work. I don't want to hear about none of that shit. I want to go to this meeting and, and see some fucking fat asses. And I want to see some, <laughs> some like fucking my boys. Like, yo, some what up? Yo, you at the meeting? Yeah. You know what I mean? Some fucking, and you have know what I mean? Fun. Like, chill, yeah. have fun. Yeah. Like, that's I was, why I went to meetings. I was telling someone the other day, I was like, yo, when I first got clean, Bro, my parents thought I was using because I would come home at four in the morning. Right. And I tell my parents, like, yo, I was out with people in recovery. And they're like, what are you doing? Bro, we used to stay out. We used to go to the 10 o'clock, chop in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Bro, we used to play like these crazy games, like fucking like stupid ass games, f have fun, fuck around. People would be like flirting, hooking up in the yep. parking lot. We go out to Waffle House. Mm -hmm. I remember like me and some people like broke into like a, a development and we like hopped in like the hot tub and like went skinny <laughs> dipping. <laughs> You know, like, bro, yeah, I had, clean. I was 17 years old. Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to go home. I wasn't like, hey, guys, have a good night. Yeah, I got to wake up early tomorrow. I was right, like, bro, right. I hate my life. Yeah. I don't want to be home, bro. My, my parents and whatever. And, like, I felt like such a loser getting clean. Like, bro, my friends are talking about, the people I grew up with are talking about, like, college and, like, out to, like, keg parties or now clubs and shit. I don't want to do that shit. Like, I want to be around my peers, but I don't want to be bored. Right. And that's exactly. why I think we, we, we like, connected so well. Even though, like, like, like at the beginning, he mm -hmm. said, complete opposite, you know, different walks of life. Yeah. You know, we grew up totally different. Mm -hmm. But fucking, we, we connected so fucking good. Like, it's like, the, the, yeah. I can, like, consider him my brother. Like, mm -hmm. Listen, to connect the connections you make in recovery on, like, anything mm -hmm. you'll ever have in your life. And you guys are you know 10 years saying? apart, right? 10 years apart. Just about? Yep. Wow, yeah, that's like me and Carl. Like, me and Carl are, like, six, seven years apart. Totally different walks of life. I grew up with, like, you know, a good mom and dad. You know, my parents are still together. He grew up with, like, a uh, abusive stepdad or whatever. When it came to recovery, bro, we were, like, about our recovery. Right, we right. had sponsors. We went to meetings. We did service. Together, he would everything together. He would encourage me to do this. We'd work out together. We'd holler at girls together. And, like, bro, when we first got clean, we did a lot of stupid shit. We had fun. Yeah. But, like... You know, you kind of need that in recovery because everyone else in recovery, it's not really with the shit. That was huge for us, especially. This is like the first time, like the, these last two months that like we're like separated. Like, <laughs> yeah, wow. like, like, got, you guys are moving? My, bro, we fucking went from halfway. At first I had, like I said, I wasn't good with jobs. Mm -hmm. So like I would fucking f have fucking so many different types of jobs, uh -huh. like fucked up jobs. And I would always leave or something. I'm like, it's my birthday. I'm out. See you later. <laughs> They're like, where the fuck are you? I'm like, bro, I'm not working on my birthday. I left. <laughs> Literally, I, I, what is, I, what I swear loser. to God, I worked at Louis Bossy. <laughs> I was at Louis like, could you imagine telling your boss, hey, it's my birthday? Yeah. And it wasn't like I'm not going to show up or call those sick. I was, I went to work. And then um, they were like, you have to work a double tonight. You're going to stay so close. And I'm like, no, I'm not. It's my birthday. I'm out. Well, he I didn't called even, my boy. He didn't even say, no, he's not there. He just oh, left. Oh, yeah, I left. I didn't tell him. I didn't tell him. I These left. These niggas called him on the phone like, yo, where are you? I put it on speaker. I'm like, yo, it's my boss. <laughs> I put it on speaker, right? This nigga's like, where are you? He's like, nah, it's my birthday tonight. <laughs> 
going out. <laughs> He's like, like, it was a normal thing. Like, he didn't yeah, know Yeah, and it's that. not like, like you're going that, out you to get fucked that. up or something. You're probably going to Waffle House with fucking Yeah, Lowe's. I was going to go to a meeting with, with him. <laughs> and like, go to Lester's. Hang yeah. on at Lester's. Yeah, exactly. But like like he said, like, I didn't he really fucking. sacrificed his job to, to go to Lester's. <laughs> that's crazy. <bro. laughs> but that's the thing, bro. Growing up, like I said, like, People my parents work. waking up and going to work and fucking, uh-huh. you know, being productive members uh-huh. of society. I didn't see none of that. What's your relationship with your family now? With my family now, I mean, it's fucking, it's it's great. I haven't talked to my mom since I've been down here. Um, you haven't talked to her at all? At all since I've been down here. Wow. Nope. I haven't talked to her. She, well, she, because you don't want to or because? It's not that I it's really don't want to or anything like that. Like, she's, she's like a real, like, she's in the streets. Like, you know what I mean? She's and using hardcore. She never has a cell phone. Like, if she does, she'll have it for, like, a week or a couple days. Dude, there's like really wow. no way to get in contact. You never thought about just like grabbing her ass and getting her into treatment? No, a couple people ask, like, you know what I mean? I always have that opportunity. Yeah. Like, I can, I, I know for sure, like, I can call you or call, you know, Adam or call yeah. anyone I want and be like, hey, my mom's with me. But yeah. it's just, I know it's like, it's just, you know, it's yeah. at that point where it's, she, she doesn't want it, I don't think. What about your dad? I talk to my dad here and there. Really? Yeah. And especially everyone always fucking once they find out they're like oh call him up like oh Dicky oh my god the movie like oh, can we talk to him I'm really like, I'm like yeah I guess wow but no, when, I call when, him, when the movie came out how did you feel about it because um, I feel like in the movie they make him out to be like a super crackhead right yeah well he was I thought you said he just like did perks and stuff no this just took place later late i'm talking about oh, now, when i start like when like my like you know what i mean so when did the movie take place and when were you around i wasn't born yet then so this is way this in is the before, past or like he's the one who actually got my mom on drugs and stuff like that wow um, he was like so fucking, the movie's based on way before you even were born mm-hmm. like my brother was just born okay you know what i mean and he was like already he's in this he was fucking smoking crack for a week and then going to fight a professional, you know, in a professional mm-hmm. boxing match. Yeah. <laughs> like, who does that? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, most people are training every minute of the day. Every minute. He and would he would win? For a week. What? He would win sometimes? He would win, yeah, definitely. Even after a crack run? After yeah. a crack run, fucking. He actually put, this one guy, he, and he told me he was, like, smoking for, like, fucking two weeks straight. And mm-hmm. his trainer was looking for him because he had a fight the next day. And, mm-hmm. he, and he just showed up to the gym the night before. And like all fucked up in that fight he did, he actually fucking like knocked the guy out in like like the seventh round or something mm-hmm. like that. Or like the ninth, something like that. And he like put him in a coma. He beat like he beat wow. him so bad. Like how did you feel about it when the movie came out? Like were you just like whatever? I was like whatever. I think I was like a freshman. Everyone was always oh, like, you Oh were, my god. Oh, you were a like, freshman when it came out. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I th- yeah, I think I was pretty Yeah, yeah so you freshman. weren't like using anything. No, no, no. When it came out, no, I was just, I was in school. And everyone, like, fucking all the whole high school was just like, every time they see me, like, oh, my, that's your dad, da, 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 da. And I was mm-hmm. just like, yeah. And, like, at the beginning, it's like, yeah. And, then, like, I would explain to it. And then it got to the point where I was like, all right, like, <laughs> this, what the fuck? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, so you're the thousandth person that keeps coming up to me and asking me. Mm-hmm. And it just got to the point where, like, like I've never been to one that be like, like anyone who knows me, you never not, bring it up. Never, 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 like, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Someone always finds out, and they like, and then I'll be in a crowd. They'll be like, you know who his dad is, or you know this or that. I do that all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you do that all the time. Really? Yeah, he's one of the fucking especially guys. when someone talks about like boxing or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or boxing Massachusetts. in Massachusetts. Yeah. Like, oh, you know the pride of Lowell? That's a, that's yeah. his thing. Oh, uh, <laughs> pride of Lowell. What yeah. is that? That's his uh, dad. That, like that's oh, that's what he's called. Yeah, yeah. Like that's like that's what he calls. He's like I'm the pride of Lola or whatever. <laughs> oh, like, really? or whatever. I wow. don't know. I don't even know where to, like that came from. Like wow. Like, but what about you, Los? Like what's going on with you now that you've been clean a while? Like listen, man. Happiest I ever been in my life. Mm-hmm. Period. For real? You're not I- sad that like we don't even. <laughs> together no more. No, that's oh yeah, because yeah. you guys moved out. Okay, so you guys been living together up until this point. You Bro, guys we, finally until we had jobs ago. together. Like we we were living together, right? Uh huh. We had jobs, multiple jobs together. Like wherever he went, I just fucking followed so him. So if Los quits, you're just like, I'm out too. I'm out. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> like like literally, he'd be like, Where are you going? Yeah, can you get me a job? Yeah, wow. I would always say, Can you get me in there? And he'd be like, <laughs> he'd be like, I got you. And then we go to that that job. And then if he's out or something, he's like, Yeah, I'm the same way. I'm gonna go. I'm like, All right, I'm out too. Like, can oh you get me God. to the next place? Uh-huh. Yep. We ended up leaving halfway together. Mm-hmm. We rented out a house, mm-hmm. fucking together. moved yeah, together, fucking, and then got got to our, our current job now, mm-hmm. working in treatment, 
And now, like, all that growing, like, I actually, like, work. I'm a hard worker. Like, I fucking do what I have to do. Got a real job. A real job, like a career. You know what I mean? Never call out. I just got a Benz. Never call out. Never call just out. Just got a Benz. Just got a Benz. Los got the Benz, too. You got a Benz, too? You guys got matching Benzes? Yeah. Matching Benzes. Are they both black? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, same fucking same car. Exact same exact car. Same car. <laughs> same car. <laughs> you know what's funny? Me and Carl have had three of the same cars. <laughs> Not even knowing. I'll be like, yo, I just got the CLS. He's like, I just got a CLS. I'm like, no, I just got yeah, the new one. I didn't one. know I was getting the same car that he had. Oh, really? Like, yeah. I knew he had a he, Benz. Yeah, he but, called me. He's like, wow. I'm getting this Mercedes. I'm like, get this one. This one's really like nice. You know what I mean? And he's like, I don't know what it is, but I'm, I'm on the way home. Uh-huh. And I was like, that's the same one. <laughs> wow. We're yeah, like, same exact car. Wow, that's same so car. funny. Yep. Some people be hating though. They be like, they be hating. They be like, oh, you gotta like say anything is this or like they'll just start talking shit. Like, yeah. Every well, time me like, and Carl I see look him, alike, like, so people really do think we're brothers. All right. So I think like people are just like y'all are just like twins. You mm-hmm. know, you guys people are probably just like you guys are copping each other. <laughs> when we go somewhere, like if I'm out somewhere and he's not there, like oh where's Los? Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I mean so that's why like, I have you guys both on the show. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because exactly. it's like why would you have Tommy if Los can't be there? You know what <laughs> exactly. I mean? What would Tommy possibly say? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 exactly. Yeah. We would go everywhere together. Yeah, we good, man. Life, mm-hmm. life is life is great. Relationship with everyone that I lost relationships with. Mm-hmm. My daughter, my mom. Life is just is good, man. Yeah. I wake up in the morning. I'm so grateful that I'm clean and that I don't ever have to go back. I literally like. It happens at least once a month where like the gratitude for mm-hmm. being clean. It's usually like I'll go to a meeting and see someone that's just coming back. Yeah. And like the gratitude that I have, like that mm-hmm. I, I fucking did it this time, and like I I don't have to fucking go back. Mm-hmm. I never have to make that fucking choice again. Like where I was, man, it's like I didn't think I was ever gonna get out. Yeah, I didn't think there was no way out. And even when I got clean, like I remember, like my dreams being so small. You know, like I remember, like not even being able to dream about things that far into the distance because you'd be like, "Well, I probably won't even be clean." You know, like mm-hmm. like you can only dream thirty days out. You know what I mean? Like you right. can't even think of like what the next year is gonna be right. like. You're just Crazy. like, "Well, I'm, you know, fucking if I'm still clean, I guess I could fucking get a bank account." You know, yeah, like yeah, yeah, like yeah. you just really don't even think about like where life can go until I think it took me like two years to be like this might be a thing like mm-hmm. like this might be life me too maybe i, I could plan a year. trip for like december right and like maybe i could start doing things i think it took never... me two years to realize i can do things <laughs> i think like it took me two years while i was like let's go to blizzard beach right okay how much is it 300 bucks okay i'm gonna save up and then we're gonna go next weekend mm-hmm. and then i was like we could do this often <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> but like before i'd be like like i just you're just so trapped in your little right. bubble of like going to meetings and like you know you have fun at the meeting and then mm-hmm. like you go home and like other people have dreams and do stuff but like you can't do that you know you're yep. still getting you know exactly and like, especially like being in a halfway house mm-hmm. you know you're just surrounded with people with the same type of mentality yeah like, there's nobody in Halfway like, hey, guys, let's go to Universal this weekend. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it Universal, just doesn't happen. Nigga, you know what, what I mean? That was, that was huge, though. Like, when I, when I first got here, one of, like, um, like a spiritual, uh, like, awakening I had mm-hmm. was, like, driving. I was driving down A1A, right, when mm-hmm. I very first got down here, like, right on the beach. And laughing with my boy and fucking just listening to music. That was like the greatest feeling right mm-hmm. there from from years of like just being in the streets and not having nothing and just never laughing with like truly like laughing with yeah. someone. Yeah. Like that was like that moment right there. Like when I got down here, I like a lot of people say I didn't know if I was going to stay clean or not. I like I knew it. Like mm-hmm. I knew like I was I was not, not going to like, you know, you weren't looking back. You I weren't like, looking back. Like I, I'm, I'm fucking completely moving forward with my mm-hmm. life. You know what I mean? Was it hard for you being young? No. I mean, I, I grew up fast. Yeah, I feel the same way. People are like, oh, it must have been so hard for you to get clean. You know, I was like, bro, I wasn't looking at other 17-year-olds. You know what I mean? Like, you I were wasn't doing shit that, like, all older, yeah. like, fucking... I had people that were, like, 30 that were like, yo, bro, you need to get clean. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 when I got clean, like, I, I wasn't, like, thinking of, like, man, I'm going to miss out on my childhood or, like, I want to have uh, fun. Right. I was like, bro, I'm tired of being dope sick. Like, when I heard the reading say, like, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, Mm-hmm. Like, dude, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired for like days in a row. Like, dude, I just want, I used to dream about having gym clothes and like going to the gym and like maybe or, one day have my own car. 
Yeah. And like maybe one day fucking like Same here. just have a regular job or some shit. Like I used to just dream about basic shit. Same here. You know, because when you're using like you just look at people getting ready to go to work and you're just like, what the fuck? The things like, I how get... could you be happy like in the morning? It, yeah, I'm the, I'm the same way. The things I, I fucking I get excited about now, like is like normal shit for people. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I call you all the time. Yo, like my credit card, like. <laughs> Um, <laughs> like Amex. what should I do with this Like yeah. you know what I mean It's cool I yeah. got a fucking Amex Yeah dog I was fucking homeless A couple of years ago <laughs> Yeah Yeah I remember the first time I had I got credit And financed the car I, mean, I didn't even know How that any of that shit One I was really young But I had no idea How any of that shit worked yeah, And like the yeah. first time You get denied You're like yeah you, you know Like when you get denied Four or five times You're like hey, It's just never gonna happen You right. know what I mean mm -hmm. And then like When you get approved You're just like Fuck you. Like it just feels good And then they're like But your interest rate is 40% You're like whatever You know yeah, what I mean yeah. Where do like, I sign, <laughs> where do I sign? <laughs> Hey remember I got I, Hey I got denied Of a fucking Pre uh, what is it? What are the the pre credit uh, pre-approved? Pre like card. you have to literally give them money. Use yeah. your own money, right? And it was a two hundred dollar one. And then I I was like gonna do like I was gonna put four hundred of my own money. Yeah. To get a four hundred, and they and they denied me for some. I'm like, well, like it's literally my money. Like, what do you mean? Like, I yeah. I don't know how the fuck you. Yeah, can it's get a denied. secured credit card yeah, with my money. Card. There's no risk on your end. Right, like right. literally none, and they still yeah. deny literally me. take one from CVS and be like, yeah, I want this. Uh, exactly. Free fucking yeah, exactly. Card. I and I got denied. Hey, well, hey, I appreciate you guys. You know, it means a lot to me. Not everyone wants to put their whole story out there, but like, I really believe like people listen to this and they see like people having fun and and sure. enjoying themselves in recovery and like that's like my whole thing because like when i got clean like my idea of getting clean was like just sitting in a fucking room with a whole bunch of other people that were just talking about like how they can't use it anymore and just looking back on like their life and how how much it sucks like i didn't understand that like getting clean was going to be like fun and exciting and it wasn't because like sometimes going to meetings seems like another jail sentence and it seems like the methadone program with right. no methadone yeah. like that's what it really feels like sometimes you know mm -hmm. i had no idea that like going to meetings was gonna turn out to be where i met some of my best friends and have so much fun yeah and learn so much about shit that like most people will never learn like they'll live their whole life and not even learn how to pray right. they'll live their whole life and not ever meditate Mm -hmm. Not even do yoga or just like basic, like everyone in recovery is like, oh yeah, meditation. Making, it's, it's, making like, a it's like a normal making thing. amends. It's like a normal life, thing. Oh, it's like never making amends. Never make amends life. ever. <laughs> never done an inventory. <laughs> never do like an inventory. It's like it's like kind of crazy. Sometimes I've been looking at my parents, like uh, you know, like, like just regular people, you know. Just go to a meeting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, hey, I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Hey, thank hey, love you, you guys. Thank hey, you. Hey, love you too, man. This show is not affiliated with any specific 12-step program. If you or a loved one is struggling with an addiction, please find a local 12-step meeting. If you believe you may need detox or drug treatment of any kind, please call 833-999-1877 to speak to a specialist. This show is sponsored by United Recovery Project, a state-of-the-art drug and alcohol rehab facility. You can visit our website at unitedrecoveryproject.com. Thank you.